is ESPN on ABC. We lost last year to this team, so you know we're looking for revenge. What's my definition of success? This is gonna be a hard fought game. We want to dominate every single play. LSU is back. We just want to go out there and prove that. We're gonna kick that door in. That's how we play LSU football. This is all we got. One, two, three. Yeah, Sunday, prime time. We're gonna put it on show for everybody. A city world famous for leisure, but tonight in Orlando, it's all about business. A collision of playoff contenders, each with three national titles in the last three decades, each believing they can add to their trophy case this season. Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime on ABC and the Camping World kickoff from here in Orlando. SEC, ACC, the Fighting Tigers of LSU and the Seminoles of Florida State, the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive game of the week. And welcome to Orlando. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreet, Holly Rowe will join us. What we think, on paper anyway, is the most attractive matchup of this first full opening weekend. Can't wait for this. Yeah, and this, the, this is the game that we thought coming in. That You know, both these teams have big aspirations of what they can accomplish. And what better way than to put them on the field together on a Sunday night to find out who's going to be able to use this game as kind of a springboard into the rest of their season. Yeah, neither team has been the dominant team in their conference, but many expect them to be exactly that this season both coaches have done a great job adding to their resumes in the offseason and adding to their portal rosters brian kelly's played fsu now four consecutive seasons last year's game was an agonizing loss for lsu beaten on a block pat at the gun yeah and, and i think what's impressive was what they did after their after that loss you know i i think you would talk to these coaches they hit some adversity and because they were able to get through that they were able to have really good years and a lot of players coming back you know and, and and, and BK's uh, uh, example, it's a team that comes back now and it's just his second year. So I think they're buying into the culture. And Mike Norvell, what he's been able to do four years, he's been through a lot of agony. But he's been able to battle through that, gets to 10 wins. And now with the quarterback, Jordan Travis Peck, I think there's a lot of realistic expectations for them to have a dream season. Yeah, it's a great quarterback matchup. Two guys who are very dynamic. You know, Jaden Daniels a year better. Can he create more big plays downfield? He's got plenty of weapons. Jordan Travis, there's the win over Alabama. Point conversion. Travis is 23 years old. It's his sixth year in college football. He's the unquestioned leader. Both these guys able to just wreak havoc on defenses two ways, actually. Yeah, and, and I think that's the thing. I think we're going to take a look tonight at one of the two of the better dual threat quarterbacks in the country, Jaden Daniels. We saw what he could do in this system. And you and I called that Alabama game last year. It was near the second half of the year. Things seemed to slow down. He was much more familiar with the scheme. Jordan Travis just got better and better and better as a starter. And all of a sudden, you now have these expectations, not just for Florida State, but I think a big part is because of his expectations. He can create. He plays with incredible poise. And I'm, uh, I'm excited to see how he plays against this LSU defense. Both defenses have gotten some talented guys from the transfer portal at all three levels of that defense, but the defense is going to have their hands full tonight. We could see some points scored here. Well, I think a big thing is going to be about, especially on third down, is avoiding the, the big ability to create with these quarterbacks. They are very good at it. Can the defenses contain it will be the question. Seminoles have the crowd edge near their backyard here in Orlando. Can't wait for this one. LSU, FSU coming up. The Nissan pregame drive is next after this message and a word from our ABC stations. <laughs> Welcome to the Nissan pregame drive. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Fighting Tigers and Seminoles, we expect a great one here tonight. There weren't that many yesterday, but there were a couple. If you told me Colorado was going to lead our highlight <laughs> rep, oh, I would have been stunned. Game one of the Coach Prime era, three touchdown dogs against TCU. Playoff team a year ago, but Shadour Sanders, Deion Sung threw for 5-10. This is good a fourth quarter as I can remember. Back and forth, back and forth. Just when you think, you thought Colorado had control, TCU comes right back. Trey Sanders a touchdown, but look at Dylan Edwards. He caught three 
touchdowns as a receiver, ran for one. Look at the blazing speed. He is surrounded by skill. A true freshman who is electrifying. And then finally, the Colorado defense on fourth down steps up and makes a big play. You got Nebraska next week. Pac-12, by the way, 12-0 this weekend. Did not see that coming. You were in Charlotte, North Carolina against South Carolina. Drake May went a perfect night, but he certainly made some big throws. Uh, it wasn't just about Drake May. I think it was what's around Drake May. This is a real North Carolina team. Up front, physical, the backs run hard. And of course, he has an ability to make plays like this. Great adjustment by the tight end. Mac Brown, 100 wins plus at Texas. And now 100 in North Carolina, busting out the moves. There he goes. There's <laughs> Miss Sally. Of course, we got to take you to Laramie. There's a party at the war. Wyoming was down 17 0 to Texas second double overtime. They get the touchdown pass. Peasley to John Two Michael pointers. Another board. Two pointer for the win. Are you serious? 7,200 feet. The fans are even higher than that. Let's rush the field in Laramie. Oh, incredible. What a scene. You're right there, one. A lot of huge games, big games with excitement, but that one and the others that we showed are. It's what makes college football so good. That was fun if you were up late. Yeah. Both coaches kind enough to let us uh, get a peek at what their pregame vibe was, starting with Mike Norvell. Mike, every play, go with that. Yeah, this is going to be a partisan crowd, I see, huh? Yeah. That's all right. We were great on the road. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I our doesn't guys doesn't bother stay. me one bit. I think our guys will stay locked in. Hey, man, man. Right. Good, good to see you, man. Absolutely. You're getting too thin. You're Jeez. looking like a freaking beast. <laughs> You were consistent, and that's that's the first thing. You were consistent every day. You were who you were, and you didn't change. And sometimes people are, are shaken to the core, and they change a little bit, and you didn't. So proud of what you did. I appreciate you saying really that. Good. Well, you know, I got all the respect in the world for you. Let's go. Let's go play. Brian talkative and Mike locked in. This has been the Nissan pregame drive kickoff from Orlando. Is coming up next. We can't wait. But first, a look inside Nissan's Heisman I used House. To watch the Heisman House every year on TV. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Ladies and gentlemen, it's football time. It's the moment we all been waiting for. College football is all the way back. It's time. Uncle in, baby, because we are going to have a ride. I walk 47 miles of barbed wire. I got a cool for Nick Tide. A brand new house all over the roof side. It's a man that'll ride a swing ride. Got a brand new chin that made a little on top. And it's a man out of human skull. Come on, take a little walk with the baby and tell me who do you love? This place is officially lit. Who do you love? There is a passion and a wildness. Only in college football, Death Valley roars to life for the win. It's good. Color, pageantry, tradition. These are the ingredients that make college football unique. Look at this moment. Have to get real loud, folks. Buckle up and enjoy. Here we go. It's prime time. Look at him force his way. What a catch. That is unbelievable. I want football. You want football. Everybody wants football. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I love college football. And if you do, you gotta love this guy. Chief Osceola rode in on Renegade. It's not a Florida State home game, but it has some of the trappings that have the crowd edge. About a three and a half hour drive away from the Seminoles' home. To Holly. Hey, Coach, you talked repeatedly about the important traits your team was developing to become championship material. What traits do you need to see early here for success? You know, manage the crowd. Obviously, a partisan crowd tonight. Uh, and, and then. Listen, it, you're going to have to do the little things the right way. Um, can't have turnovers like we did last year in the opener. we got to make the little plays. As long as they settle into the game, do the little things the right way, we'll be fine. Jaden Daniels, your quarterback, did well in the game with his legs. How has he evolved as a passer? I think just confidence and, and poise. You know, those things take some time, and he knows our offense so much better. Uh, I look for him to have a great night. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Last year's game in the Superdome was really compelling, really competitive, very sloppy, typical opening game mistakes. Both coaches expect their team to cut down on it. FSU to kick the ball away. Ryan Fitzgerald to boot it. Aaron Anderson, the speedster freshman from New Orleans, is deep for the Bayou Bengals. And 
Fitzgerald drives it to the end zone, and LSU will start from the 25-yard line. Here is Jaden Daniels. Got better as the season went on, Kirk. A lot more from the structure of the offense. He plans to stay in the pocket. Doesn't mean he can't get out and really hurt the nose with his legs. I think we saw that last year. Early in the year, new system, new teammates adjusting to the chemistry and the timing of those receivers. By the time he got to that second half of the season, most notably Alabama, he had settled in and become a completely different quarterback. And I think also the, the offensive coordinator, Mike Dembrock, adjusted to his skill set. Doesn't make many mistakes. Only one interception for every 130 pass attempts last season. Play action on first down. Flipped out of the backfield. And the catch is made. And running free is Trey Bradford. Huge gain. Still rolling down near the 20-yard line. Denbrock drew up a good one to start this. Yeah, they, they can catch Florida State man-to-man -man coverage. Linebacker here gets caught up on the backside of the tight end. Nobody takes the back out of the backfield. He slides on a rail route. See that linebacker's up, caught up with a tight end, Mason Taylor. Nobody there to pick up the back sliding out of the backfield. 55-yard gain right away. They're in the red zone. Daniels on the move, flips it short to Taylor, and the tight end makes a man miss and bangs down inside the five-yard line. Love this aggressive look by LSU, coming out trusting their quarterback and attacking here. Get the ball into the playmaker's hands. Mason Taylor, of course, again, we saw what he could do as a young freshman last year when they won that game against Alabama. Here, get him on the edge, coming from the backside. Nice, easy throw and easy read again for Daniels. First and goal, a minute in. Hand off inside to Bradford, a guy who was not expected to be a huge part of the running back rotation. They're pretty deep in that area. Right away, he makes the biggest play of the opening series. And Mike Tiprock telling us this week they've got three backs that they'll use. Josh Williams, who's more steady Eddie, and Noah Kane, the transfer from Penn State, with Logan Diggs out. They're going to rely on Trey Bradford, who started at LSU, went to Oklahoma, came back, and you can see how fast he is out in space. This is Josh Williams, the 200-pounder in the game now. Keeper, Daniels makes a cut. He is wrapped up immediately on the edge by Patrick Payton. No gain, and it's third and going. A flag comes out on the tackle. Did they get over aggressive? Well, that whistle blew, and they took him all the way to the ground right in front of the official. The head referee throws the flag. Derek Anderson in charge of a Big 12 crew. Same conference that worked last year's matchup in New Orleans. A lot of emotion out there early in this game. Peyton makes a great play. Did not stop. Yeah, instead of third and goal at the five, they get a fresh set of downs about the two. And this defense aware of not the back, but the quarterback down inside that 10-yard line. Look at all those jerseys. They made the play. You got to stop. I mean, it's not that it was physical, it, malicious, but it was just so late they had to make that call. Power formation. Was there a flinch before the snap? Couldn't tell. There is no flag, and Williams gets nothing. How about Florida State bowing up here? Now they got to do it three, two or three more downs, depending on what LSU decides to do. But making it tough on LSU in the interior makes you think again they're going to try to get Jaden Daniels out on the edge where he's got the ability to either run it in or, or find an open receiver. Daniels surveying, play clock down to seven. He's got to hurry here. Still motioning as it's three, two. Does he see it? I don't know if he got it off. Throw in the end zone. It's incomplete. Broken up over there. Tended for Malik Neighbors. I thought it was a delay. Uh, the, the thing that is frustrating, it was close to being a delay, Chris. But I think he did get it off. He didn't put enough air under this. See how flat that ball is? Throws it right into the defender. Neighbors, as soon as the ball is gone, he pointed up. 
as if to say, get that up in the air, give me a chance. Daniels that time usually throws that fade pretty well. He just threw it too flat. Neighbors by far the top receiver on this team last season. Empty backfield. It's Williams motioning now from the slot. Big play early on. Can the Knowles make a stand here and force a field goal attempt? Daniels has time in the pocket. Delivers into the end zone. Catch made, but out of bounds. It was Neighbors working the back line, defended by Renardo Green, and now an early decision for Kelly. It's fourth down. A great matchup between these two. Green's a really good defender this time. He just doesn't see it. You know, Neighbors is pointing. That right foot looked like it may have touched first. Let's look. He's already out of bounds. Left foot's already out of bounds. So it's a great call by the officials. They're going to go for it. Marks right down the field, but it has been tough to get the last couple of yards. Neighbors comes in motion. Three receivers to the right now. Williams is the back. Time running down, and they'll have to spend one. Did not like what they saw. The matchup against FSU's defense. So we'll take a break. Early drama here in Orlando. Fourth down from the two-yard line. Daniels scanning, now trying to create. He'll be dropped back at the 15. The sack is made by D.J. Lundy. And the Knowles make a tremendous stand. It was first and goal at the two. They went backwards from there. Six plays inside the five-yard line. They bring the blitz. Adam Fuller says, you know what? We're going to be aggressive. Watch this job of coming after him. Josh Williams steps up to account for it. He goes right over top of him and then gets up off the ground, shows you the athletic ability and the desire to come up with that sack at a critical moment here early in this game. Great play by Lundy. He's an amazing athlete. You'll see him at fullback on offense, blocking, running, and even catching the football occasionally. This time, the sack keeps us scoreless here. What a stand after the Bayou Bengals came out throwing haymakers in the first couple plays. Jordan Travis in his first play of the season zips it short and the catch is made by Jaheim Bell the do everything transfer from South Carolina they said they would get him involved early he wasn't kidding first play very first play Jordan Travis has got to be ecstatic about having a talent like Bell you see the big numbers he had last year really has been around for four years it's 27 start tonight to me I think it's his composure that goes along with his ability to make quick plays and also be able to improvise. On the run, where he's so dangerous. Zips it high. Trying to get the ball to Keon Coleman, another newcomer. It was Michigan State's top receiver a year ago. Just not so much adrenaline there. But with first two plays, you see the transfers trying to get in the ball. Keon Coleman, Michigan State and Bell from South Carolina and when you talk with the Florida State coaches I mean those are the names outside of the Jordan Travis they want to bring up right away about what a difference these two have made with the potential what this offensive production can be saw the most experienced offensive line in college football 214 combined starts by far the most who's going to win the battle up front who's the first clue here on third and five Toa Feely is the back. LSU just rushes three and drops a bunch of guys into coverage. And he squeezes the ball into Johnny Wilson. The guy with a big wingspan, a red zone weapon, goes down low and makes a tough catch. It goes in motion, creates man, finds a nice throwing lane. Good job. Usually the 6'7 guy, you think it's, he's going to go up and over. That time he goes down low to make a nice catch for the first down. Coleman comes across the formation, and they hand it off inside. Hard yards in there tonight. Harold Perkins made the hit. To a Philly there running the ball, you, you'll see it. Benson come in. I mean, th this offense is based on their ability to run the football. They want to be able to get your safeties down and run support 
create the one-on-ones, and then attack downfield. Travis, as you said, it's second nature. He knows so much about this offense. Very calm back there. They pick up the pressure, and again, finds Wilson in space, and that's a second first down catch for the big fella. Ball moves to the 46. Yeah, he kind of, watch him look left. Just kind of moving the defense. He knows he's going to come back to the big man at 6-7. Nice open spot there and soft spot there in the zone. And again, that's what I love about Travis. He's known for his creativity, but he sits in that pocket when it's there and makes good decisions, quick decisions, and gets the ball out. They fake it to Benson. He wants to take a downfield shot. Sets up, and it's Coleman, but he was inaccurate there's a flag down Coleman was wide open Greg Brooks jr. trying to cover him but the throw was off target I, I think it might have been downfield where there was holding by LSU I think it might have been an offensive pass interference State, okay pass interference number 14 offense 15-yard penalty Replay first down. Wilson, was he trying to clear out down there some space for his buddy? Yeah, I didn't see Johnny Wilson deliberately run into the defender. Like you said, he's trying to block. He thought that ball maybe was already out. I saw the reaction on the backside. Watch this. He runs right through him right there. I saw the defender grab on, but I did not see the uh, initial contact that Wilson created. Offensive pass interference is one of the most damaging penalties oh, wow. in the sport. 15 yards. It's usually a drive killer. First and 25 now. Benson follows some blockers and Trey Benson, one of the toughest guys to tackle, one of the best in the country, Kirk, at yards after contact a year ago. Well, and, and it's because of that lower body. He is one of the more physical backs in the ACC, and that time he had some great blocks up front. It's a veteran offensive line. They got 11 on the first down run, so second and 14. Benson moves to the slot. Travis escaping, trying to create, flips it downfield, and going up to try to make a leaping catch was Destin Hill, the freshman slot receiver, couldn't quite. Hey, a big thing that we want to see is Harold Perkins, the linebacker who, you know, last year made a lot of headlines with his ability to rush. They're trying to play him off ball. Here he is up top trying to get pressure. Pretty good job by Robert Scott trying to just push him, keep him upfield to give his quarterback time to throw. Pretty accurate throw. Nice job by Brooks getting that right arm in there. Perkins, of course, became a pass rush monster. In this game a year ago, he played only on special teams right, right. and actually had a bad penalty. He blossomed into one of the SEC's most feared defenders. Third and 14. Blake Lock at two. Travis flushed. Looking for help. Delivers underneath. It's Wilson again. And Wilson has now made three catches, all of them for first downs for the LSU 40. Well, this time you wondered where they would put Perkins. They spy him. He's not going to bring him here on third down. They're going to spy with him. So he's got to try to keep that quarterback. Problem is he commits too far. Let's Jordan Travis create. And then they find the open man for that first down. They're all the way back to first and 25. He's a potential drive killer. And they get the first. Travis has been dialed in on third down tonight. There's a slant on first down. Gets made by Coleman. Deion Coleman, his first touchdown as a Seminole. strike what a sequence for FSU the goal line stand and they score in their first possession yeah Florida State fans this is what you wanted to see Keon Coleman the big receiver from Michigan State 6'4 215 getting isolated one-on-one -on -one. a heck of a throw right in front of him to give him a chance to make a play after the catch you can see how nifty he is even at 6'4 makes the safety miss walks into the end zone for the touchdown Ryan Fitzgerald for the PAT Florida State got kind of a silver medal out of high school. He chose Michigan State because of the turmoil in Tallahassee, but when things had settled down,
He came to Mike Norvell and he makes an instant impact. Florida State, first blood, play first. The Camping World Kickoff is brought to you by Camping World. Over one million RVs sold. And in part by Visit Orlando, where anything is possible if you can imagine it. Both programs can boast Heisman winning quarterbacks, three of them for Florida State. And Mike Norvell told Jordan Travis, when he was anything but an established starter, much less a star, go down there and look at the three Heisman trophies in, in, in this uh, Office's trophy case. There's no reason why you can't do that. It seemed far-fetched at the time, but he has blossomed to do exactly that. A, a contender. 86-yard drive in nine plays after the fourth down stop of the Seminole defense. LSU has embraced this Sunday of Labor Day weekend. Of course, the matchup with the Knowles the last couple of years. And check out what's coming a year from now in Vegas, September the 1st, Sunday Labor Day. I like that one. That USC off to a great start. Caleb Williams, he might throw for a hundred touchdowns this year, <laughs> and they might need a lot of points to keep winning. By Are the you way, kidding me? <laughs> How much fun is the Pac-12 in their last year going to be this year with what Colorado did the other day? Oregon State today looking great. We knew they had a good team, and of course. The others, I mean, you got seven teams right now that are legit. You know, five in the top eight teams. You saw Utah beat the Gators on yeah. Thursday, undefeated so far. Daniels escapes, makes a cut, and somehow eludes traffic. Looks like he's going to get knocked down behind the line. He makes two before Patrick Payton got him. Pretty good push that time up the middle. Joshua Farmer, big fella, showing some strength to force Jaden Daniels out of that pocket. And LSU going fast here. Daniels gets it off just before he's hit and the catch is made there by Brian Thomas You're gonna have your eye on Daniels to so see if he hangs in the pocket a little more patiently this year yeah, That and added trying to hit the you know the bigger throws downfield I one thing they learned about him They love to spread defenses out and just let five play in space Let him make quick reads and either has the option to make a good throw or with all that space He can take off and run Noah Kane, the former Nittany Lion, is in the backfield now. Gets the football and runs right into a garnet wall. Nothing for Kane that time. The Knowles are sending a message. It's going to be tough to run up the middle on us tonight. I'm telling you, that, that front. Go back to that goal line stand that they made. That front stepped up, showing a lot of physicality in the interior. There's Braden Fisk, the fellow from Western Michigan that everybody wanted out of the pool. You got him, you got Fabian Lovett from Mississippi State. Tatum Bethune comes over from UCF. He's been a, a stalwart leader of that defense. Fisk a monster in there in the middle. And off inside again. They're trying to be patient with the running game, but that's a Bethune filling that time, and it's going to be third and long. When you have Fisk and love it, and you're able to rotate others inside there, and then you think about the experience that they have at linebacker. You know, Adam Fuller talking to him in their fourth year now in Florida State. It, you could see the intent to try to become more physical. It's not just the athletic ability on the edge and the defensive backs. It's, I think, where they are right now at the line of scrimmage that makes them a real threat as a defense. Knowles rotate in their pass rush package on third and seven. Daniels against the four-man rush does have time, gets the ball out, and the catch is made. First down across midfield to Malik Neighbors, guy who went on to have a monster year as a receiver. But this is kind of a redemption game for him. He mumped two punts a year ago. They were crucial in the loss. Yeah, no doubt about it. He's fired up for this opportunity. Great route, good job coming back to the ball. And there's the timing. That's the difference in LSU a year ago when they played in this game and where they are now. All those reps, the time that Jaden Daniels has had to work with Malik Neighbors, you can see there on the third down, that timing was perfect. Josh Williams, he took a look at the back and then sprints up the middle, and Daniels knives into the secondary, first down inside the 35. Holly. Well, guys, after that last goal line stand,
down. The Florida State defensive line came to the sideline. They were fired up. They think the right guard of LSU and the right side of that line is vulnerable. Look for them to keep attacking right there on that right side. Jared Verse and DJ Lunday pointing that out to their teammates. And Jared Verse, if given half a chance, could be a game wrecker for the Seminoles. Number five, he was a monster a year ago in this game. Daniels calmly in the pocket and delivers a poor throw over the head of Josh Williams, who had a lot of space. Just a little bit keyed up. That was a potential big gainer. Two by two look. Bradford is the back. Daniels looks and finds a receiver on the edge, and that's Kyron Lacey. And Lacey weaves his way down near the goal line. Stop just short. Dynamic with the football. Made that a much bigger play than it looked like it was going to be. Slipped the tackle. Showed great balance, and what a throw there by Daniels. And the effort here by Lacey gets the hand down. Jerry Jones trying to bring him down. That heel stays up. Knowles defense wasn't set. They play fast and score. Trey Bradford barrels in. And the Bayou Bengals answer with a 75-yard drive. Yeah, and I think we were taking a peek just to make sure that he was up. And to me, on that replay, it was. Not that it matters. They get the snap off and a touchdown. This time, they're able to punch it in. But what an effort. Let's remember that effort there by Kyron Lacey. What he did to not just catch the ball, but fight for those extra yards to take them down near the goal line. It's the receiving core of LSU. Of course, minus Keishon Boutte that needs to step up. They're looking for better production from that position group. I really like their group. I mean, neighbors get most of the headlines, but Brian Thomas, you see what Kyron Lacey can do. They've got an Alabama transfer and Aaron Anderson. They, they've got a pretty good group. You throw in Mason Taylor, it tied in. Damian Ramos, of course, who had that PAT blocked by the Knowles a year ago to preserve the one-point victory. Also had a field goal blocked in the second quarter. The only two blocks he had all year came against Florida State. So nothing is automatic, but this one is up and good. Well, we told you this could be fun. Here was the play before the touchdown. Yeah, again, let's, let's take a close look. Heel stays up, stays in bounds, gets him down all the way near the goal line. And then this time, the offensive line opens up and up room to allow Trey Bradford into the end zone to tie this game up. If you're able, we hope you'll consider helping folks affected by Hurricane Idalia. Donate at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross respond and help people recover. Tonight's weather, 81 degrees. Pleasant compared to what these teams endured in training camp. This is almost like Arctic conditions, right? <laughs> That's what they were telling us down in the field before the game. They said, thanks for bringing the cold front in. You know, I'm sweating. <laughs> Kickoff driven to the end zone. Impressive opening drive. Mike Garvell calls the plays for inscription. There were two runs and seven passes by Travis. Yeah, a heck of a job here with what Florida State did. You can see Travis sitting in a pocket, making some good reads, getting the ball to big Johnny Wilson when he needs to extend it. He's as good as there is. Even with the spy that time by Harold Perkins still finds Wilson again. And then the touchdown to another big receiver, the transfer from Michigan State, Keon Coleman, making the safety Sam miss and then into the end zone. Wilson. Coleman and Bell were featured in the drive. None of them began their career at Florida State, but that, of course, is the new normal in the sport. We've been playing a lot from the pocket, a lot of in-breaking routes, slants, digs, crossing routes. Delay, and it's zipped and it's dropped out there. That's been one of the knocks on Wilson. He'll make the acrobatic tough catches and sometimes will drop the easy one. He's worked a lot on that in the offseason. Yeah, it, it just felt like he knew the ball was coming. They brought that corner blitz. Good job by Jordan Travis. They're on the same page. I think he just started to peak a little bit, started to look downfield, worried about that safety coming up to hit him in major burns.
Travis scans and rolls and puts it short. That's Benson out of the backfield, who was spun down at the 33 after a solid gain. Set up third and three. Omar Spates, former Beaver, made the tackle. Yeah, he was very close to being about a yard downfield. And they had offensive linemen to set that up. They were 10, 12 yards downfield. So they catch a break there. Keeper. And Travis lowers the shoulder, but he didn't get there. Stopped about a yard short of the marker by Greg Brooks and Harold Perkins in his fourth down. A great job by Greg, Greg Brooks anticipating that. And that was a heck of a collision. The safety coming up to meet him right around that first down marker, but gets there because he reacted so quickly right there, goes in low and prevents the first down. Knowles fans got excited for a second. They thought the Norvell was going to keep the offense on the field, Come but on. not from the plus or the minus 34. Alex Mastromano, fourth-year punter. Didn't have much work last year. Knowles was so effective, they didn't have to punt it too often. Gregory Clayton is back to field it for the Bayou Bengals, and it's driven deep by Mastromano, the Aussie. Risky overhead catch by Clayton, who falls down as he makes it at the 15-yard line. Booming punt. Remember, neighbors last year had some issues. That's a sore spot for LSU this time. At least he caught it. At least he caught it barely, but he caught it. 51-yard punt. Yeah, this is uh, Malik Neighbors' lowlights, and he had a lot of highlights, but steps up. Muffet one was right in the bread basket. That set up a score. He didn't get fired at that point. Dropped another one. And after that, the, the job went to other people, and he went to the job of catching touchdown passes. But as you said, to his credit, he didn't go in the tank. He used that and, and really went on to turn things around and have a heck of a year, 2022. Have people, a lot of people excited what he's going to do this year. Daniels across the middle, and a flag comes out. It was neighbors running a route and defended by Green. Uh, he looked like he got a hold of maybe that left arm. Right again. Pass interference. Number eight, defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Results in the first down. So, see, like right there, the hand on the jersey. Oh, yeah. Good call. Great call by the official. And very easy to see. Yep. Yep. Told you. Remember that play in the back of the end zone? That's going to be a good matchup, eight on eight. Green, the senior from right here in Orlando. Big night for him. Throw it to the sidelines. Aaron Anderson is a speedster, a very small guy to New Orleans. They knocked him down. LSU wants a flag, and now it comes in late. Kevin Knowles shoved the Knowles. It, you got Brian Thomas out there trying to block with Mason Taylor. I think Thomas held on to his guy as the ball started to break to the outside of him. This crew, Derek Anderson, they worked a game here in Orlando on Thursday nights. Across town, UCF, Kent State. They're, they got our schedule Thursday, Sunday. Yeah, they, Chris, you may have all setting a late hit there as well. That's what got Brian Kelly worked up. Well, I, thought, I thought that's what the flag was. Yeah, I don't know if they, there was a hold there or not. Could it? They have offsetting. There's only one foul on the play. Okay. There's no foul for offensive holding. Wow. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Number three of the defense. 15 yards added to the end of the play. First down. He's got a great NAS name to play for Florida State, but that is a costly penalty. He's going to move the football. Yeah. Brian Thomas. To me, when you saw him working outside, just trying to pick up a block, I think when the ball bounced outside of him, potential hold right there. Got a hold of go. it. Yeah, they let that one go, but then he gets hit out of bounds right here. The late hit out of bounds, a good call. The offensive holding call, it was borderline. 
didn't have any effect on the play, so I'm okay with them picking that flag up. Well, but it would have no been offsetting the if they called it. Well, you would have had a live ball foul and a and dead ball foul, so you would have enforced both. Ball near midfield. Daniels are going to throw on first down. Checks it down, and Lacey, this time he cannot escape the tackle. It's made by Greedy Vance. Knowles doing a pretty good job mixing up coverage and getting some pressure on Jaden Daniels where they can play zone. Not have to worry about playing man to man. You can see after that play, defender had a few words towards that LSU bench. Grady Vance looking over at Brian Kelly had a few words for him. <laughs> Brian Kelly's not afraid to give it back. Vance is a Louisiana guy, so you know he's going to be keyed up playing LSU. The Louisville transfer. Daniels. Throws across the middle, and that's Brian Thomas, and he spins free. Not great tackling so far by the secondary of the Knowles tonight, and now another flag comes out. This thing is overheating quickly. Thomas makes a great effort, and then you have Zerje Thomas with a big hit late. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 54 defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And they got Byron Turner, so a second personal foul in the series moves the ball inside the 25. Yeah, it's actually not on the ball carrier, it's right there. So yeah, he just threw Lacey to the ground. Yeah. Threw him or ran through him. Wow. Lack of poise by the Seminoles in this series have just given LSU quick scoring position. 30 yards and penalties that gained 33 with the offense. Play clock at five. Daniel still has it. Still has it. Tries to jump over people and gets absolutely hammered to the ground. Met in midair by Bethune who just drove him down. Maybe not do that as a quarterback in the middle of the field. Yeah, I know he's an athletic guy. It's the last thing you want to do is go airborne right into the middle of that defense, right into the arms of the middle linebacker. He times it up perfectly and gets a great hit, a freebie on Jaden Daniels. Bill Amanye waving off any talk of a targeting there. Well, he's a runner, so he's not oh, yeah. defenseless, and there was no crown of the helmet with a launch into his head. So it's good no call. Seconds running down in this eventful first quarter. See if they get the playoff. Just Daniels for the end zone. Looping throw incomplete. No chance to make a play. Double double coverage there. Neighbors a heck of an effort. So LSU threatening. Seven apiece in Orlando. Good first quarter between these two heavyweights. Each have landed some shots so far. Time for the second quarter. ESPN College Football Primetime on ABC and the Camping World Kickoff. Goodyear Boom providing aerial coverage, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear, more driven. Seminoles have never lost in Orlando in their history. Ten wins. Two ties. Both teams ended their season in bowl games, separate bowl games played on this field a year ago. Third and seven for Daniels in this penalty aided drive. Five penalties, 53 yards and a quarter. I know Mike Norvell is not happy about that. Three Kirk on this drive. Williams has it in the hole, and they run for it and almost get it. Did he get knocked down short? Braden Fisk right near the marker. Yep. Well, they spot it. Looks like it's going to be short. Left side of that offensive line opens that counter up. Will Campbell, the left tackle. Remember him last year as a true freshman. Really came on to have a great year. Now in his second year as a starter on that left side, just opened that hole up and gives him a chance here now on fourth and one. Yeah, here we go, another fourth and short. Plus it was the sack by Lundy that snuffed out the first threat. Two tight ends to the left. 
Instead, it's Daniels with a keeper, and they swarm him. Another fourth down stop by the Seminoles. Shaheem Brown made the tackle. They were ready for the keeper. No doubt about it. And again, they, they have prepared all summer concerned about the quarterback's ability right here to get to the outside and watch Florida State's defense doing a really good job having awareness. Tight end Taylor comes around, but nobody is there on the outside to be able to deal with that extra man. The safety had walked himself up. Shaheem Brown, 38 off the edge. See that? Nobody there. He had the option, if he had time, to throw it out into the flat. But by the time he wanted to throw it to Taylor, that defense had him down. Looks like that might be a self-destructive drive for the Noles defense. Those three penalties set up LSU, but another fourth down stop. They'll take over about the same position they did after stopping the Tigers in the first quarter at the 15. Benson from the pistol. They fake it to him. Daniels is clobbered. Just gets the ball out. And the catch is made by Kyle Morlock. Makai Wingo is there in a hurry. Woo! With Mason Smith out, you know that this big guy in the middle right here would have to make a lot of plays. <laughs> Makai Wingo was an All-American last year. Stepped up with Smith down. He's doing it again tonight. Just so quick off the ball. 6'1", 295 pounds. Not the biggest but you show, shows you there how quick he is in the middle. Big fella wearing number 18, and that means a lot at LSU. Benson knocked down. Of course, it was Matty Mock, the championship quarterback who wore 18. Then it was Jacob Hester after that, and it, it's kind of given to a guy that has great effort and outworks everybody, and they gave it to Big Wingo this year. Yeah, within that program, that's an incredible honor. That and number seven, of course, is such a great yep. history. Had a chance to... To see Tyron Matthew on the field before the game with his family. So proud to be uh, a great former player for these LSU Tigers. That's every time he gets a chance, he's here. Third and five. Coleman motions out to the right. Travis scanning, flips it up underneath, and the catch is made by Tofili, who snuck out of the backfield in traffic and gets a first down catch. You better get after him. This offensive line does a good job, and they do such a good job, it becomes backyard football. I mean, instead of taking off, he gives you the threat, kind of froze Harold Perkins, giving you the threat, drew him towards him, and then the vision downfield to make a nice throw. If you're an opposing quarterback, you're happy to see number four in coverage where he's just average. Getting after Still the passer, he's all world. Yeah. Time to Ophelia takes the handoff and drives forward for about three. It's a good point. I think a lot of people are curious to see how they're going to utilize Perkins because, like I said last year, he was electrifying. You know, he, he had made so many big plays. But keep in mind, last year he was being an athlete and learning the system on the fly. They kept him on the edge an entire offseason to learn how to be an off-ball linebacker. It's a guy that played high school running back, defensive end. So he's learning how to play that position. They'll still put him down on third downs when they can. Yeah, he is incredibly efficient. He didn't have a whole huge number of password snaps last year, but he made an impact a lot of the time. Second down run. Benson tries to pick his way. There wasn't much there. Gets about a yard. It'll be third down and medium again, and the Knowles fans wanted a flag that time. LSU's defense starting to get a handle on things. Matt House, the defensive coordinator, outnumbering them there on that play on second down. Greg Brooks came down for the threat of the quarterback all coming off the edge. And then the big fellas in the middle took away that inside run. House wants improvement on the third down defense this year. They were 39% last year. Not bad, but that didn't meet his standard. Coleman motions across. Travis. Oh, another drop. Oh my goodness, Johnny Wilson for the second time tonight has had an easy catch and he had space that time to move the sticks. Yeah, you see Perkins four, they don't rush him. They're using him more as a spy, but again, I, I mean, Johnny Wilson's a great player. But we saw what he could do last year when he came over from Arizona State, averaged 21 yards of reception. Everybody excited about what he can do. And I think when he goes into the interior there, he's taking his eyes off the ball, maybe worrying about getting hit. Another critical drop, hands kind of seem to be a little bit backwards there trying to make that catch. So the drop is a drive killer, and Mastromano hits it high. 
And coming up to make a fair catch, another muff. A scramble for the football. The Florida State team has it. LSU thinking, oh no, not again. It's recovered by Azaria Thomas. But that time, it was Anderson trouble feeling the punt. Wow. Chris, you wonder if they, if LSU talked at all about, hey, last year, the special teams issues. It, you know, you talk about something to a point where it can become something you'd start to mentally worry about. I know the fans and the media know all about it, but internally, I'm sure Brian Kelly's trying to put that behind them. But LSU, the miscues from a year ago, come back to haunt them here and give Florida State great field position. I mean, you talked about Gregory Clayton the last time making a very risky catch down inside the 10. They took him off and put in Anderson, who also handles the kickoff returns. And that muff sets up Travis at the 22. Travis had to pump fake. Throws it into traffic and gives it right back to LSU. Poor decision and Deuce Chestnut, the Syracuse transfer, made him pay. Well, this play got blown up because Greg Brooks brought a blitz from out here and it creates hesitation for the quarterback. When he sees the blitz, he sees it. Nobody there to pick it up. He wanted to get the ball out quickly. But I don't think he and the receiver are on the same page. He pumped fake, tried to buy time. By the time the receiver starts to look, he had to force it. He should have just thrown that ball away or eaten it. Instead, throws it into traffic for the pick. Both starting corners for Brian Kelly are from the portal. Zion Alexander from Southeast Louisiana. Deuce Chestnuts from Syracuse. They had a five-star transfer from a &M. Denver Harris is still trying to figure some things out. He was expected to contribute as well. He's not with the team. So back-to-back -back turnovers, and the Tigers have it at the 26. Daniels zips it short, and Kyron Lacey couldn't come up with it. Had to turn up field and lost the handle. Nobody happier than Aaron Anderson to that interception made by Chestnut. Get the ball back to Jaden Daniels and the LSU offense. You think LSU will, will calm the tempo down a little bit as they're doing here? Or do you expect them to crank it? Yeah, the I, think, I think it'll be a mix. I think it'll be depending on where they are in the field and how the game's going to flow of the game. Daniels still's got it on the edge. He's got a blocker. He's got space, and that's just easy yardage for the quarterback. Sprinting out a couple of yards short of the marker. Yeah, that's the threat that he brings. Anytime you get him on the edge, everybody we've ever dealt with that tries to defend him, they always talk about the outside edge. You know, got to keep him in the pocket. We got to respect the rush lanes. Try to squeeze him. We don't want to let him break contain because of how much damage he can do once he gets outside. Daniels with the most productive passing first quarter he's ever had in his career, 151 yards. He's also been able to run for 13 yards. That time it's batted up and falls to the turf, but pass rush right in the face. Again, only four. That time Patrick Payton with his length, great length, 6'5", just goes up. Great athlete, able to time that up perfectly to knock it down. And the Knowles come up with another stop. They've had the two fourth down stops, and now a third and two. Impact player off the edge, and as you said, he's long. A Miami native, Miami Northwestern, a great high school program. Jay Bramlett to punt it. Not particularly good. It's going to bounce and get a nice LSU roll. And it's Coleman who did not come up and field it. He was not a punt returner at Michigan State. He's new to the roll, and that was not what they're hoping for. As it rolls dead all the way down at the one-yard line, about a 65-yard punt. This is a uniquely cool moment. The brother of referee Derek Anderson is Colonel David Anderson of the Louisiana National Guard, and he was piloting one of the F-15s in the flyover. Look at the pride in his face. That is awesome. <laughs>
We know it's your brother. <laughs> that's great. You don't see that very often. Well, fly over with the referee. I, that's awesome. That's great. Harold Perkins, by the way, in the in the opinion of this officiating crew, touched that punt. Keep an eye on it. They did touch his leg, and they spotted the ball down through eight, calling it dead there. I don't know that it's super clear that it hit him in the leg, but it's the difference between the one yard line and about the eight yard line. So FSC and they're going to take it. Looks like. Replay has looked at that and determined that there was no touching. The ball will be placed at the one yard line. It'll be first down for the state at that spot. Perkins right. said, yeah, I didn't, I didn't I didn't get that. Good use of replay. Hey, hey that's that, that's a big deal. I mean, you, yeah. you, you started to reference that. There, there's a really good shot there. The first shot, you're right. You really couldn't tell. That one you can tell. Great job by the guys upstairs calling that down. And if you're an LSU fan, it's a huge deal to put this Florida State offense now inside the one-yard line. Perkins just kind of galloping around the football. He came close about three different times but didn't touch it. Look. So Travis got to be very careful. He's got three tight ends in the game here. They haven't had much success in two-year running game so far. Benson gets about a yard. I mean, we get, we we honestly could just keep a, a camera on Makai Wingo the entire game. I mean, he is getting a push. And what I love is he's doing it with his his get off every single time in the interior. If you're watching this game, watch big number 18, how quickly he gets off the ball, putting a lot of pressure on the inside here. This this Florida State offensive line with Maurice Smith in there at center. He's always good, but I think extra inspiration wearing number 18 for the first time. Quick story on how meaningful that is, by the way. So Ophelia blocking and Travis gets the ball out quickly. You know, Howie Roseman, the, the GM of the Eagles, said that they actually drafted Benny Logan in the third round in part because he wore 18. They figured what he meant to LSU, that's the kind of guy you want in the locker room. Mm -hmm. Not that he couldn't play, but that no, was actually yeah. a factor. No, I, I, and I think it's, first of all, Howie does his homework and he understands, you know, that the DNA of these college programs is pretty obvious. He goes into Athens quite often and finds some great players, but I think that just shows you the respect and what that 18 represents is not just a great player, but an incredible leader, a guy that brings a lot to that locker room, and Wingo is definitely that guy this year. See if LSU can get off the field here on third and four. Jaheim Bell, slot left. They haven't involved him since the opening play, and one of those pre-snap delay a game. They didn't get it off quite in time. They got the timeout, I think. Did they? Yeah, Mike Orville from the sideline. Prior to the snap, timeout, Florida State. This is their first of the half. Timeout on the field. Penalty saves about four yards. Whenever you hear that fast clap, I mean, hurry up, center, get the ball back. Let's go. You can see his hands. <laughs> bring it, bring it, bring it. Come on, Maurice, come on. How <laughs> do you spend the timeout? The Camping World Kickoff is brought to you by Camping World. Over one million RVs sold. And in part by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. Well, teams have some crystal balls in their trophy, but this Dr. Pepper National Championship trophy is the coveted prize this year. LSU's last three head coaches have won national championships. The only program that can say that, so no pressure on Kelly at all. Off the timeout, some time to think about this third and four. Empty backfield. LSU crowding the line to lay it back out. Yeah, they rush four. Travis from the end zone. Pocket collapsing. He just lofts it into the air. And Greg Brooks had a great chance to pick it off. And the usually posed quarterback has made a couple of shaky decisions tonight. Yeah, we saw the interception on the last series in here. And again, you got to admire he wants to make a play, but there's just nothing here. The only rushing forward, the pressure comes from his right. You know, instead of just throwing this ball away, he throws it up into the air as he's getting hit. It just kind of into the middle of the defense. They're about to intercept that ball at the 10-yard line. Somehow it falls to the ground. Late over the middle 
and softly oh. thrown. That's, that's, that's three no-nos. Stromano from his end zone boots it. Clayton back returning punts. They excuse Aaron Anderson from that duty for now. And a cheer from the LSU faithful are cheering the successful fair catch. 43-yard punt. Both defenses have stepped up, Kirk, since the opening touchdown for their opponents. And what's been amazing tonight has been the Florida State short yardage defense. Six plays inside that five-yard line. They bowed up, had a heck of a fourth and goal when they ended up blitzing here with D.J. Lundy. Good job there. And it's really just been LSU moving the football, but Florida State short yardage defense being the difference. Yeah, Bayou Bengals run a lot of plays in Seminole territory, but just the one touchdown. Now they take over near midfield. And he escapes. And Daniels right down the middle of the field. Makes a man miss. And is finally dragged down at the 11. He's electrifying. Watch the right guard here, Miles Frazier. Good job here being able to come up, help out, get up. Up to that second level, he cuts right behind that. Really good natural feel there by Jaden Daniels. You can see what he could do in the open field. More rushing yards than any FBS quarterback a year ago, almost 900, 40 more in that play. Now finds Mason Taylor, and don't look now, but LSU's close again inside the five. And if you're an LSU fan, that's what you're used to seeing. Jaden Daniels makes a play with his legs. They go a little bit of tempo, ball gets out quick. Mason Taylor out in the flat, positive yards. Now again, we just showed you a package on that Florida State short yardage defense and what they've been able to do tonight. See how it plays out here. First down markers at the one, second and three. Kane is in the game. Straight keeper, Daniels, fights down near the goal line, doesn't get there, but it's first and goal before Jerry and Jones stopped him. I'm just glad to see him get up. He kind of fell awkwardly there as he went airborne, kind of landed backwards into that Florida State defense. Worried about his legs, but good to see him up. They get that first down, and instead of running the backs, they run the big, they run the quarterback, get that extra blocker. This time they handed to Kane, and he's hit immediately, and once again, that Seminole defense stout on short yardage. Omar Graham stopped him. Good job of filling this to defensive line, submarining, eating up those offensive linemen, free those flat those backers to get downhill. Kane again, this time he dives into the end zone and LSU takes the lead. Making use of that great field position, 50 yards in four quick plays. The 40-yard quarterback run sets it up. This time, the clicker, the AT&T 5G. Watch how they just are able to go up and over. Look at that left side, just collapse down, push it down, give him room to go up and over. The respect that Jaden Daniels there on the outside keeps the edge free. And finally, LSU is able to get some points of being inside that five-yard line. They look to Kane. Short yard situation, scored 10 touchdowns a year ago. And LSU with 6.02 before halftime and has taken the lead for the first time. Electric long distance run and then a power run. Dish halftime report coming your way. Kevin Nagani, Booger McFarland here with you. 14-7 LSU. Good as advertised so far. Yeah, the offense is playing well aside from third and fourth down. If you're Florida State, you got to get the ball to those two big receivers. Johnny Wilson, Keon Coleman, isolate them against those LSU DBs and throw it over the top. Monster matchup tonight. We got a monster matchup in Tuscaloosa next Saturday on big ESPN. One. Texas and Alabama. Coach Sark going to join us at the half. Chris, Nathan back to you. Boots it away. Let's uh, get the Affleck trivia question for you. Affleck. Last season opening win versus a top 10 opponent. So, season opening win versus a top 10 opponent. LSU wasn't top 10 a year ago. No. They got the W. There's Perkins in this LSU defense. They have gotten. Jordan Travis a little rattled, Kirk. 
three for six, 16 yards and an interception in that second quarter after a very efficient start to this game. Pressure off the edge and the completion hit behind the line over there is Coleman, Juice Chestnut with the tackle. Good job of reacting. He's the one that came up with a big interception. This is what I want to take a look at. Look at all these plays LSU's had in Florida State territory, 19. Of course, we've had some goal line stands. Florida State only two. Behind the six on second down, Travis has time now. Chooses to use his legs. He's got good speed too. Slides down. Knowles fans wanted a late hit. And there is no flag, but the tackler, Obi Ahufo, is still down on the field. Uh, it's a good job here of not forcing it. The last couple series, he's forced the ball. He has an open receiver there to the outside, Keon Coleman. But I think he's a little hesitant of trying to force that throw. That's what the fans are excited about. They wanted that late hit right there. Bill, what do you think of that call? I think because he went down late and wasn't that hard of a hit. Yeah. I'm good on passing on that. I'm with you. It was Chestnut who got slid into by a Hufo, so the guy has been so effective at corner tonight. He's being looked at by the athletic trainers. But you know, I, I think that I think it's probably a, it was a surprise for Nike Mort Marvell. We talked about the experience of Jordan Travis is his 38th game. He's played six years of football, 28 starters. And after a sharp start to this game, all of a sudden the decision making appears a little foggy for him right now. Yeah, over the last couple of series, he looks he's looked great early. I mean, he was playing the way he expected to play. Now I want to see how he reacts to a couple miscues. You know, like I said, he had Keon Coleman breaking free to the outside there, and instead of making that throw, he he held on to it. Right, this is a veteran guy. This 27 career starts, played a lot of ball. He's been around four years. I'd be shocked if he doesn't settle in, but big part of that is you got to respect what LSU is doing defensively too. Ashton Stamps a true freshman corner is in for Chestnut on this third and six. LSU backs out now late pressure off the edge it's picked up and a doubt across the middle and that time big fella makes the catch and Wilson dragging folks into LSU territory. That was a much needed conversion for this Knowles offense. And, and a great job by this offensive line. This time, and forget the dual threat. He's a quarterback sitting in the pocket on third down under duress. But the line helps him out. Good read and a good throw. And here's a flag pre-snap. They go back to Wilson, whose two drops have been part of FSU's Illegal offensive drop-off. Number 53, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. I'm going to have to feel good after a couple of easy ones got away from Wilson. Chestnut, by the way, quickly back in the game. It's important for LSU fans to have their starting corner. You pick up a big first down like that, you get a little momentum, and then five yards back with the center flinching there. Now it's first and 15. Travis flushed again. Runs to his left, makes a throw across his body, and that's another drop. This time it's Shaheem Bell who had a lot of space. Wingo was after the quarterback again. Yeah, Bell is, is a playmaker. They're trying to find ways to get him the ball, and it's a great job. Eyes downfield. He's about to give up on the play, but at the last second, he sees Bell clean at the second level, and he just loses it. Third drop. Saw two from Wilson earlier. These are their better players, and now Jaheem Bell drops that. Would have been a first down. All of them easy drops when they're in space and had room to run. Rodney Hill rotates in a tailback, in second and 15. They fake it to him. Travis gets around the corner and will just dart out of bounds after a short gain. No one open there. Chestnut forced him out third and long. You know, it's not just about defending the run in the middle of this, of this LSU defense and what they're doing without Mason Smith. Wingo leading that charge. It's getting penetration, even in pass protection. It's forcing Florida State to move that launch point. So when you move the quarterback, you take away a lot of the field. He's working with half of the field, and they're doing a good job of taking away those receivers and forcing him to run. You need 12 on third down.
LSU rushing only three, playing coverage. Travis has plenty of time and delivers a shot in the middle to Winston Wright Jr., the transfer from West Virginia. They didn't come after him, and he made him pay. Now they show pressure. They rush three, sit back with eight in coverage. Nice job of having the time, and there's a really good throw by Jordan Travis finding that hole in the zone. It took some time there, but they were able to hit it. Shows his poise and experience what you expect their 18 yard gain to convert the third and long. On the move again. Goes back to his left and drops it off underneath. And the catch is made by one of those fine tight ends, Kyle Morlock. Pick up about seven. Wingo is after him again. They can't block him. <laughs> it's a, no, he's a, he's a handful for a lot of people, and that's been the case tonight. You know, uh, Bell gets most of the attention, six from Florida State, but more like coming over from Shorter. You were at Shorter. You know, where you talk to the coach. <laughs> happens to be in Georgia, Division yeah. Two. Yeah, but they're as excited about what he can do, so the combination of those two tight ends can really help this offense. Benson. Stutter steps and plows forward. He's short of the marker. He'll take us down inside of two minutes in the first half. Third and about a yard and a half now. Tough sled in the middle with Wingo inside there. Let's see if they try to get it to the outside. He's lined up right now anyway over that. On the right side. Sneak. Travis fighting. Second, third effort does get the first hand of the 21. He didn't have it at first. No, what an effort here. Again, there's not a lot of room there. He's just determined, just bouncing off of guys. Remember, inside two minutes with the new rules, the, the old rules come into play where the clock will stop after a first down. LSU, Wingo just trying to get lined up here. They're playing quickly. Tenth play of this drive. Maybe wearing down this LSU defense. Showing pressure to the left. Hooping throw for the end zone. Battle. Coleman. Touchdown. Went up and got the football over Major Burns. And that's where they're excited to have him arrive from East Lansing. What a play. Well, I saw that blitz to the left. There's nobody there. There's three receivers on the the slot fade to the bigger receiver Keon Coleman and it works out you can see his family's fired up major Burns has pretty good size he's 6'2 himself that's just saying hey my guy's better than yours hopefully he's okay looks like he may be cramping up our guy's better than yours he's gonna win this 50 50 ball and he goes up and high points that ball for a touchdown his second tonight the transfer from Michigan State and from 40 and 21 that's why he was one of the most coveted receivers out of the portal and Travis the minute this dude got on campus he knew his reputation but when he started to work with him Kirk he was ah I got a weapon <laughs> no doubt see he's pointing to it he sees the pressure there's really nobody on that other side but instead he goes to the right and he just says you know what I got that cushion I trust that Coleman's going to be able to make this play. Look at the offensive line. Does a, does a nice job off that blitz, giving him just enough time. And then he puts it up into the air where Coleman can have a chance to adjust back, even though it's underthrown a bit. It's a tough play for a safety one-on-one -on -one against a receiver, even though, again, Major Burns, a leader, second year in this defense. Heck of an effort there by Coleman. You see the step. strength of Coleman. He's 215 pounds, two-sport athlete at Michigan State. Played some hoops for Tom Izzo. He'll head to the locker room a little bit early here to get those legs checked out, get the cramps dealt with. But Travis immediately impressed. His teammates were pretty wowed. That they knew of his reputation as a receiver. They weren't sure until he got down to Tallahassee exactly how extraordinary an athlete was. And yeah. Then he went up at Mike Norvell's house, like the day after he got there, it was a team gathering, and he's wearing jeans, and he throws down a windmill dunk. And they were like, whoa, Anderson, knocked down. Let's answer the athletic trivia question. 
So much going on. I haven't really had a chance to think about I it. Season I was going, opening top I was going back to like Jameis Winston. I mean, it's that, that era maybe. I But I can't remember. I remember they had a hyped up game with Alabama, but it didn't go well. No, it, it did not. Uh, I, I was going to say Miami. I know you don't believe me. But <laughs> it was a long time ago. I didn't know the year. But uh, yeah, a slugfest back, uh, what, 18 years ago. Trying to come up with one tonight. Heck of a job by Jordan Travis after those miscues, bouncing back to deliver on that drive to be able to tie this game up. Shows you really what he's all about. Yeah, he's been he's been clutch on third down tonight and precise with his throws. See what LSU does here. A minute to go. They've got two timeouts. They'll work the sideline. Neighbors couldn't quite escape. And the clock now will stop here as they move the sticks momentarily. Green on the stop. They certainly trust their quarterback to operate the two minute drill. Long throw drops out of the hands of Lacey. Well, this, this is going to be a really good example for us to see. You know, you got a veteran quarterback, even though he's just his second year at LSU. Of course, he did an incredible job when he was at Arizona State. But you, the question is, not just tonight, but people want to see how far this offense has grown around Jaden Daniels. Can guys like Lacey and Thomas help out neighbors? We know about Mason Taylor, the tight end. Here they are, just trying to get in the field goal range with a couple timeouts. Ramos not known as a long range field goal kicker. His career long is 47. They got to go a ways. The attempt one blind side hit. The ball is loose. A scramble for it as Daniels got pounded by that man, Jared Verse, who was a nightmare a year ago in this game. <laughs> in this matchup, Will Campbell's a great player. Jared Verse last year went up against him and he was a true freshman. Verse was a transfer. And here it is that same matchup a year later keeps his hands off of him, uses that speed and that bend to be able to get there in the blind side of the quarterback. He yeah. is a stud. It's, uh, he's mocking the, the breaking the rock, which is the tradition that the Seminoles have. Boy, he got that arm, NFL style, right? He got the arm down and just come off the ball out, pun intended, of the hands of the quarterback. Speaking of NFL style, a lot of people thought he would have maybe gone out last year. He decides to come back, continue to work on his game, and I, I would argue if he's not the top pass rusher in college football, man, he's right there in the discussion. Holly, we talked to Verse when we visited Tallahassee. Impressive guy. you got to love his work ethic. His work ethic is impressive. I talked to his parents, Eric and Janine, and they were telling me about when he was in high school, he did a little bit of everything, basketball, baseball, but his proudest achievement was helping his team win the state championship in the 4 by 400 meters for the first time. You saw that speed off the edge. I saw him run a 100-meter leg that was pretty impressive. This kid has got athletic background. He's done a little bit of everything, but not only that, he played the saxophone. His parents raised a good one that can do a lot of talent. That's awesome. Things. They're going to review to see if it was a, a fumble or an incompletion. Verse, you may know his story. He played at Albany. I mean, nobody really had offered him much out of high school. He was a tight end, weighed like 200 pounds. At, at Albany, he just played with a chip in his shoulder. No matter who he was going against, he, he played possessed. And a bunch of teams spotted that and said, he can help us. And... And uh, yeah, another look, as I said, they're going to look and see if it was a forward pass or a fumble. We'll bring in Bill Lamagne to see what he thinks about it. I see the hit causing his arm to go down, not the quarterback intentionally trying to go forward with the pass. I say the call stands. Do you think the ball was out of his hands before he moved his arm forward? I have, I have a fumble. Okay. It was a really good slow look. There's the contact. Yeah. He still appears to have a you grip can, on the ball. You can have an argument on that, but I say his arm's coming down and forward because of the hit, not because of his throwing action. Man, Bill, I, how you guys do that stuff? I, honestly. Don't congratulate I mean, him yet. We'll see no, what the I'm, verdict no, is. Yeah, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. The, they're up here. I hate, I, I you know, I hate to say stands we all on know, anything. We all know the rule there, but <laughs> I, I just don't know how you, such a gray area there. This one is right on the edge. Yeah. Here's a, here's a, a Here's a spoiler alert. They have moved the yard marker back, and I think they're going to rule this incomplete. After review, the quarterback's hand was going forward before losing possession. It's an incomplete pass. It will be third down and 10. Florida State will not be charged as timeout. 
Third down. That's a good, good announcement by the referee from the standpoint of that timeout because they would have never taken the timeout if it had been ruled an incomplete pass. Right. I'm sure it's hugely impactful versus it doesn't get no. the sack. But with 25 seconds to go, after what he just saw, does Kelly just run the ball and, and go to halftime? Yeah, I mean, 25 seconds to... You have, you have the two timeouts, third and 10. Long way to go to get in field goal range. We'll see. Yeah. You would think they would just kill the clock and go in 14-14 at half. In any case, somebody better account for number five over there is on the right end. And yeah, they, they moved the back over there to help Chip, maybe. And they're going to run the ball. And just give it to Williams. He's got some space. He gets out and barrels way into Florida State territory. He's knocked out with plenty of time to operate. A conservative call, but a huge play. Well, because they had three receivers lined up all the way to the left, they're playing man coverage. All that second and third level of the defense is on the other side. And even though they were just trying to work to keep the clock moving, make Florida State use a timeout, there's nobody left on that side. Yeah, look at this, Chris. Look at the formation. Look at all these defenders. There's nobody left on this side. So by using that formation, there's not a whole lot of people that need to be blocked. The receiver ends up getting up to the safety. Lacey make that corner have to make the tackle, and they pick up huge yards, and that's how things can change. Now you got 30 seconds. Now you can take it about a field goal. 35-yard gain on the ground on third and 10. Haven't had a lot of huge plays from the running game tonight except by quarterback Daniels, but that was potentially a, a three-point play if they can get Ramos just uh, a little bit closer. Right now, if he gets 10 yards, yeah, it'd be a 57 yard. I got to get about 10 more yards yeah. to him, him to feel good about it. Yeah, maybe six yards to give it a shot. Still have a timeout. I don't. Depending on what happens here, you want to hold on to that timeout. Probably got a couple plays here to try to run a couple quick ones. Kane is the back. Daniels, pocket collapsing, he escapes again, and will be dragged down at about the 36. So, Kalen DeLoach stopped him. Now they're right at that field goal line. But a great effort by, by Daniels to get out of bounds, hold on to that timeout. And instead of getting sacked or losing yards, he able to, he's able to pick up three yards, get out of bounds, and hold on to that timeout, see what they can do here. Yeah, crucial that he'll still have that timeout. It's just a little bit closer. Playing man-to-man -man here, straight up. And that time he passed him off. Neighbors comes across in motion. Daniels is looking to his left, delivers a long throw, and wide open is Brian Thomas. They lost him. Now he's down in the red zone with 17 seconds to go. Now they're thinking touchdown. I, I was saying man-to-man. -man. It looked like there was a little bit of confusion there. When they went into motion, I think Florida State miscommunicates in coverage, and they just freed him up. Nobody in coverage there on Brian Thomas. So the thinking has changed for maybe what a safe play and punt. Yeah. You get into field goal range. Now they're thinking end zone. Take a shot. Still have that timeout. Daniels from the pocket throws and it's incomplete looked like uh, Malik neighbors might have run out of bounds anyway Ventrell Cypress the fine transfer corner from Virginia in coverage but they continue to bring pressure Florida State and Adam Fuller the defensive coordinator instead of putting a safety over the top to help out the corner he's leaving him on an island on that last play if, if I'm Jaden Daniels and you get that look again I'd go right back to him. If they're not going to help with that safety, try to take another shot. Let's see what the safety does at the snap of the ball. A lot of trust in Cypress, isn't there? He gets neighbors one-on-one. -on -one. Got him again. Yeah, he's looking that way. Throws, but mm, miscommunication. He threw it short. Neighbors didn't break the route off. You see, you see neighbors coming back saying, because there's a little bit of miscommunication. Is he going to throw it back shoulder, or is he going to throw it downfield, depending on where the coverage is or the corner? I don't think they were quite on the same page. Neighbors, I think, wanted that thrown downfield where he had a shot. Do you take another shot? And that's the matchup you want. 
Again, this is this is what Daniels is concerned about. And if he gets that one on one, just put it up in the air into that corner. Give him a chance to run underneath it. And do they flinch? No, nope. Florida State spending a defensive timeout after getting a look at it. LSU, Kirk, has lived in the red zone. Five out of six possessions they've got down in here. A couple touchdowns to show for it right now. And how important is this sequence with LSU way backed up? They got that replay reversal, which helped them, saved them some yardage, and you know, find themselves threatening again. Seems like Florida State's defense has been kind of having to come up with a stop all first half. Yeah, and, and they, they should, they've certainly done that. I'm amazed that they're trusting their corners on these islands. You know, I mean, it's that's, that's a tough thing to do with the experience that Jaden Daniels has with Malik Neighbors. Neighbors a thousand yard receiver a year ago. I mean, this guy's elite and you're leaving him out there. I mean, I you respect it. Ventral Cypress, a transfer, he's at 14 starts at UVA, comes over, he's picked up this system very well. But they put him into the boundary and they trust him on these last couple of plays. They've been able to get away with it. I, I personally would go right back to him. And again, I'm going to circle it again if this safety is not coming over to help out. This time, Cypress backs off a little bit on third and 10. Daniels does not want to take a sack here and just throws it away. Clock was ticking down almost a, a mistake. Does get rid of it with four seconds as Dennis Briggs brought the pressure. Really good coverage downfield. They, they took it. He initially looked again to his left to see if he could get it to neighbors. It was taken away. Good job there by coverage and eventually that pass rush affects the timing. All he can do is throw it away. So with the four seconds to spare Damian Ramos comes on the try from 36 yards out his first field goal attempt tonight. Normally very reliable inside of 40 yards, 8 of 11, and Mike Norvell will spend the timeout, the final one of the half here. On this beautiful night in Orlando, aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Road tested and game ready. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear, more driven. Something about these two teams going head to head. Last year, it came down to an extra point. This year, we get you know, another close game. Remember, Florida State deferred. They will get the ball to start the second half. How about the clean first half for LSU opening game? They don't have a penalty. You know, they've had the muffed punt. That's the one mistake on special teams. But Daniels and the offense have executed beautifully. And now Ramos will try to give them a three-point lead at the break. No problem. LSU in less than a minute before halftime drives at 67 yards in 10 quick plays. And we do have a good one. And there's two heavyweights colliding on a quote neutral field. Although FSU clearly has the crowd advantage. BK never misses an opportunity to talk to the officials one more time. <laughs> Daniels doesn't have a touchdown pass has been sacked a couple of times but he has a 40 yard run to set up a touchdown Holly good demonstration there to the officiating crew what were you trying to make your point you know they've got big offensive receivers and they're getting off the line and we just got to do a better job okay you guys have been able to get to the red zone move the ball up and down the field but how can you be more productive once you get there yeah we have not been effective obviously we had the big opening drive and weren't able to cash in you know we've got to be more decisive in whether we give the ball or pull it uh, and w I think we've gotten away from you know what you know our reads are uh, we're just trying to do a little bit too much we'll settle down here we'll go through it again uh, and just be more disciplined with our reads and, and we'll be fine thanks coach thanks I appreciate Brian Kelly's halftime interviews that, that is so analytical right he's, yeah, I love he's it. kind of putting it on Daniels six Red zone trips, they come away with two touchdowns and that field goal. 17-14, Bayou Bengals at the break. The Dish Halftime Report is coming up right after these messages.
Welcome back to the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. What we expect in Orlando, a good, well-matched collision between these two heavyweights. ESPN College Football Primetime on ABC and the Camping World at kickoff. Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. So LSU had the big edge in yardage. They were down there five times in the red zone, two touchdowns and a field goal. Florida State's touchdowns both came outside the red zone. They'll get the football back to start the second half here. How do they get Jordan Travis going again? Well, I think the way you get Jordan Travis going is like any quarterback, you need to run the football. I, Florida State, if you watched him last year, you would always talk about Jordan Travis, but if you really studied him, it was really more about balance and winning the line of scrimmage as the season went on after that three-game losing streak. We haven't seen that tonight. They, they've got to be able to, I'm sure, go in there at halftime and talk about, guys, we've got to find a way, whether it's getting the ball outside, they're losing the battle with the line of scrimmage. So, that, But I think if they can run the football, uh, that can really open some things up. The question is, can they do that? Can they find a way to do that? Again, it's a very experienced offensive line. They've had a hard time keeping Travis clean. The LSU pass rush was, was a factor. Let's go down to Holly, our silent report presented by Visit Orlando. Coach Mike Norvell said, hey, we had unforced errors in the first half that we have got to clean up. Too many penalties. At one point after the first quarter, he gathered the entire team together and really got on them, not being overly aggressive and letting this environment get to them. He also said that they've just got to clean up some mistakes, some missed defensive assignments, and then the drops he wanted to address. But he said we're right on track. And one important note, Keon Coleman, who had a terrific first half but cramped up, left early. He came out of the locker room drinking Gatorade and eating a baggie full of pretzels. Got to get that salt in. <laughs> and the carbs. Yeah, thank you, Holly. Good stuff. And the play clock's down at one. They do get the playoff. And Travis has a whole lot of time. Now we're going to create on the move a whole lot of space, too. Instead decides to throw, and here comes a flag. Trying to come back to the football. There's uh, Wilson there and Deuce Chestnut, who had a good first half guilty of the foul. Yeah, under ball, under thrown, receiver working back. Pass interference, number 22, defense. It's a 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. It's LSU's first penalty. Man, is it hard to cover these receivers oh. when Travis buys time yeah, like you, that? Come on. You call it plastering. You're trying to stay with them. I mean, he's all over the place, and the, the foul has already occurred. In fact, it wasn't when he tried to work back to the ball. It was just, as you said, Chris, Travis is back there running all over the place, and you're out there on an island. That's a tough thing to do. Jaheim Bell is in the backfield now along with Toa Feely. First time they've showed this formation. He's a lead blocker as they hammer it to Toa Feely and get eight on that running play. There you go. We talked about how can they get this running game going against this front, these linebackers. And there's, there's an idea. They move Bell, who's a tight end, kind of a versatile guy, can do a lot of different things, get him in the backfield and let him lead the way. Two back look again. And they run it to the left. And that's a couple of successful plays with a rankle, and they're in LSU territory suddenly. And, and, and again, I'm sure that's what Mike Norvell and his, his offensive staff, they, they went in and talked about, guys, we've got to give them some kind of threat to this running game and affect the eyes of these linebackers and safeties. Make them have to think about that instead of just throwing the ball or Jordan Travis running around, making plays with his arms or his legs. And it's a big part of what they like to do. And that's Benson back in the game. And third consecutive run, and Benson to the left kind of runs downhill. Doesn't look like much, but a good push gets him about three and a half yards. Saw Jordan Travis taking his time. You want to see what LSU would commit to, and he sees these two safeties back. And anytime a quarterback in these kind of offenses see that, they have to check to either throw it or run it. And with those safeties back, they've got the numbers to their advantage at the line of scrimmage. Try to run the football when the numbers are right. It's Bell who comes in motion. Travis flips it underneath, and it's Keon Coleman with Bell as a blocker. 
Nice rhythm here for Norvell as a play caller coming out of halftime here. Yeah, and even though the safeties are back that time, because it's just a quick throw, it's an extension of the run game. And gives you, again, an idea of what Jaheim Bell can do for you. And he's a guy that brought in a, a lot of fanfare when he came over from South Carolina, had some big games, a game you and I called uh, in Columbia against Tennessee. I mean, he could be a running back, a tight end, a receiver, or a blocker as he led that way and gave him a chance close to a first. He's improved as a blocker, gotten more physical. That's not really what's made his reputation, but you got to do it all. Backward pass. Spawn looking to throw it. Is in deep trouble, retreating. Now trying to create, flips it over the middle, and the catch is made by Wilson. Wow! A lot happened there as Dude spawned the receiver. Looked like a scrambling quarterback on the play. I, this is a great job here of improvising, and it's a heck of a job by the, the, the defense from LSU. You see this? They want to get that downfield. It's taken away. So now, right there, I thought he was dead. Somehow he keeps his play alive. He gets away from Jones. I thought he might run it, but instead, how about the athletic ability on the run? Throws an absolute dot for a first down. That could have been a disaster. That, was, that could have been a 15-yard loss. Instead, it's an 18-yard gain. They score on this drive. Don't forget that play for highlights on SportsCenter. That was a great play. You know you're thinking, oh no, as a coach, when a receiver is running around with a ball in his hands. Those trick plays, usually, if it's going to happen, good happens right away, right? Right, right. And that's what I said. Alexander, the transfer from Louisiana, he got back there, took it away, and, and usually a receiver doesn't really know what to do. A guy who's trying to throw a double pass, instead he improvises and uh, keeps saying transfer, the Illinois transfer. Span makes a nice throw. Meanwhile, Wilson has taken the focus off those drops. Five receptions all have resulted in a first down tonight. Two back look again. This two back look really helping their running game out on this drive. Once again, it's Bell as a blocker, but nowhere to run as Raiden Swenson just blew the play up. And Grab down for about a five-yard loss. Yeah, he's right here. It's pretty easy. Nobody picks him up. Nobody sets the edge here. Confusion because of the blitz there by three Brooks. So I think just by showing that blitz may have affected Morlock the tight end to go out, release to the outside. Then nobody picks up Swenson. Very easy play to disrupt that. And makes it a third and 13 for Travis now. Does he have some more? Third down magic. Wilson's in the slot to the right. He's been the third down target. They go to him again. This time he doesn't get quite enough for the first down. Stopped by Alexander at the 15. He's three yards short. And here comes the. And yeah, they're going to bring that field goal unit out. Positive yards. Good move off the line of scrimmage by the big man. He's able to turn the, the corner Alexander around, but not able to get the distance he needs for the first down. So they get positive yards. Makes the attempt for this field goal much easier. It's Gerald, a guy who wants to kind of get his mojo back. Last year was the least accurate season that he had. It was three seasons at Florida State. This is his first attempt of this season from 33. And he knocks it through. So Florida State moves it 60 yards in nine plays, and we are even again in Orlando, 17 apiece. We look forward to next Saturday night over on ESPN, one of the most anticipated matchups in the opening month of the season. It was a thriller in Austin. Bryce Young and the Tide held on. Now Jalen Milrow takes over that job against Quinn Ewers and the Horns. He looked good yesterday. Did. Yeah, I think Alabama trying to go back a little bit more to playing defense, field position, and running the football. Milrow showing there's going to be an element in his arm, but especially his legs, good complement to what they do on the ground. Picked up a fumble snap and just ran it into the end zone. <laughs> right. He's a spe special athlete. We're trying to bring it out here is Aaron Anderson who had trouble fielding a punt earlier. He'll be stopped short of the 20. So the first possession of the second half for Jaden Daniels he was able to create three explosive plays. One really explosive run of 40 yards to set up a touchdown. Matches the total. A year ago, that was a big emphasis for this offense. Brian Kelly said 
just not good enough with the playmakers we have in this kind of a quarterback to not be anything better than average when it comes to explosive plays. Yeah, they, they need to be explosive, but they also need to play to his strengths. And I know they're working on his pocket presence, and that's important. That's all we saw in the second half of last year. But he's really dangerous when he starts to be able to make plays with his feet. He has been tonight. He's got the ball still, gets in space, just wants right by Jared Verse. As athletic as he is, he could not get the quarterback. Akeem Dent brings him down. And again, that's what that's that's what he does. You know, it, he's able to attack that edge. He's got the option. You see Taylor right there in front of him. If that defensive end goes out too far and an inside linebacker is really scraping from the inside, he can dump that ball to the outside to Taylor, but he had room to run. Chunk of 15 yards. Now looking to throw. Short route. Catch made by Neighbors in traffic, and he's going to pick up about eight. Neighbors. Not a huge factor in the first half. That's his third catch tonight. Doesn't really have a big play yet. One of the elite receivers in the SEC. Yeah, he, he's looking for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. They're almost able to hit him there at the end of the half on the couple fades. Unable to make that happen against coverage again by Cypress. Second and short. Let's see if they dial up a shot for him. Now it's a keeper. They flip it in the flat. Taylor's got it. Gets a block from Neighbors on the edge and runs with great determination. And now there's a flag on the tackle of the LSU bench by Cypress. Is it another personal foul on the Knowles? And a couple of them in the first half in one possession. Verse was a little aggressive over there. And Marvell pointing to his head saying that wasn't a smart play. I mean, he's, he's hustling, trying to make a play, but they pulled it off. But again, I love the play call. I, I just love to see Daniels. That was a triple option. I mean, that, that, that's basically he can hand it off, he can pull it, or he can throw it around the edge. Watch the, watch the outside collapse down right there. 44 takes it. They take him away from running, so then he can throw the football. You can't cover all three of those options. One of them's going to be open. Good, quick decisions there by Daniels. Third catch tonight for Taylor. Bradford picks his way for about four up the middle as they cross back into FSU territory. The whole night they've been on the move in Knowles territory. It's just been about how efficient can they be when they get down there. Yeah, five of six of their drives have ended up in the red zone. They punched in two touchdowns. There's been a few goal line stops and then the one field goal. So you're right, they have been moving the ball between the 20s pretty much at will. Comes the loudest tomahawk chop of the night as the Knowles partisan crown tries to make it tougher on this offense. Empty backfield, ball out quickly. Neighbors on the edge, but a very sure tackle is made right there by Jerry and Jones. Not easy to corral him like that in space. No, the only way you can is you react quickly before that ball is in the air. You recognize that they're lined up with three receivers. You got to get underneath the block of Mason Taylor, which he was able to do, but really good, quick reaction there. Just grab that foot and would not let go. Here comes a third and six. You got neighbors down here at the bottom, away from the three receivers. Daniels took a peek that way and now delivers across the middle in and out of the hands of Kyron Lacey. Drops a play. Both offenses. Cypress was in coverage and it's fourth down. Here comes the punt team. Yeah, pr pretty good job here by Daniels working all the way back. Puts it right on the money. You could not throw that any better. Worked from the play side, came all the way back. Cypress with pretty tight coverage, but a great throw and a drop. Pretty well played game for the most part for an opener, but the drops on both sides, yep. something we did not expect. We've got some elite receivers on this field. Bramblett tries to pin them back. It's a very high punt, and Coleman comes up and makes the catch at the 17. LSU just two for seven now in third down and a couple failed fourth downs. The Camping World Kickoff is brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Local Chick-fil-A restaurants recognize the Florida State University Athletic Field Maintenance and Campus Grounds Crews earlier this week.
with a catered meal to thank them for all they do to support Florida State University. Seminoles get another good third down stop. Now the offense takes over at the 13 yard line. Go back to this third down and, and take a peek at what they were trying to do. Trying to get the ball thrown to the right there to neighbors. You can see him looking in. But look at this drop by Lacey. If he catches that ball right there, think about all the room he has to run out this way. It's been a foot race maybe to the corner of the end zone. I think he knew that. That's why he kind of tilted his head downfield. Could, Could have been. Man coverage and a drop ball. Missed big opportunity there for LSU. Rodney Hill be wrestled down. They still cannot get this running game going. Big Jordan Jefferson. That's his specialty, plugging up the run, makes the play behind the line. Well, they, they can't get it going with the one back look. The last drive, we saw a lot of two backs, but look at this. There's a couple guys pulling, and there's the quickness by the big guys in the inside. Jordan Jefferson, you say Jordan Jefferson at LSU, you think of <laughs> yeah. some names come up to come to mind. Different body type. This time, West Virginia transfer. Powerful, that time showing his quickness on that counter play. Loss of four. Travis against the three-man rush should have time and launches over the middle. Coleman goes up and makes a catch. A beautiful pitch and catch. He beat Chestnut out near midfield. He has made a monster impact in his first game in the Garden and Gold. That's his fourth completion over 20 yards, one-on-one. -on -one. There's that matchup again against Chestnut. He's come up with a pick, this time a perfectly placed football by Travis out in front of Coleman to come up with that big game. And they hand it off to Hill. And bangs forward. I said, so when you go good on good in the scrimmages, could, could your DBs cover Coleman? And Jordan said, no, not really. He, he's, he's hard to guard. And that gets competitive in those, those scrimmages. Absolutely. Some boo birds coming down because Florida State, you could see them pushing that pile. LSU, the whistle's blown. LSU still taking some shots. The crowd reacting to that. Also thought he never went down. That's what Hill thought. Wait a second. I'm still up. Now Toafili is the back. Pitch it on the edge. And that time, nothing doing. Coleman caught the ball. They had sent a tight end over there to block, but Omar Spates fought through all that stuff. Yeah, really nice job there on the, on the edge of the defense. Spates cleaned it up, but it was the secondary doing a good job of forcing that back to the inside, just taking up occupying two blockers here. Look at that effort right there. Good job by Major Burns, and then Spates comes in. Oh, we're feeling in motion. They hand it to him on third and three, and the round lowers the shoulder. Didn't get there. And now Norvell has a decision. It'll be fourth down and about two at the 42. Andre Sam made the play. That felt like a play call that's setting up the potential to go for it here. You know, just can we pick up the first, and if not, how close can we get because we're going for it on fourth down. It had that kind of feel, and in fact, they are going to end up going for it here. It was a big moment. Late stages of the third quarter in a tie game. Can LSU get a fourth down stop this time? Travis as a runner is always a serious threat. Are they trying to draw him off? They're going to run the play. Flips it out and wide open is Toa Feely with a convoy. Makes a cut. Still going. Slung down at the one, but a huge fourth down conversion puts him on the brink of claiming the lead. Well, they brought everybody. Brought Greg Book, Brooks, they get blitz here. This is the key right here. They bring the pressure to the outside. Toffili slips to the outside. There's nobody there to pick him up. And now you see a good effort downfield and a heck of a block by Johnny Wilson. And now playing fast, just walking in the end zone is Jordan Travis. So Norvell trusts his offense. Beautiful play drawn up, and FSU back on top. And a lot happened in there. What a drive, 87 yards, Kirk, in seven plays. And there's Jordan Travis. Watch this read. Feels it from the backside, pulls that out of there, and ends up walking into the end zone. LSU selling out to try to get to 
to Ophelia before he can get the ball. Good job of Jordan Travis feeling and sensing that. Pulls the ball out, out of his arms, and keeps it himself for an easy touchdown. That's the third touchdown accounted for for Travis tonight, who is climbing the FSU charts. She's going to threaten a lot of records before this season is done. Knowles back up a touch. Chris, we got to go back to this. This is a, a zone read. He's reading Perkins, but he feels Brooks on the backside. I know it's a one-yard touchdown, but he's reading four to his right and out of nowhere senses that that collapse the blitz from Brooks and pulls it because of what was the blind side and then it allowed him to walk into the end zone. Really a rare play by a veteran Brooks making the proper play going for the back and yeah. not the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, again, he's not even supposed to be looking at him. He's looking play side and just kind of felt Brooks on that blitz. Anderson up to receive this short kickoff to be knocked down at the 24. So Florida State's offense, touchdown, field goal, touchdown in the last three drives. The All-State boss here in Orlando with Curtis Wilson keeping us up to speed and stuff. It's your All-State good hands play this weekend, hint, hint. Uh, yeah, obviously, you got to go to Colorado. A game that went back and forth, and Colorado ends up making a huge play here late in the game. Dylan Edwards. Dylan Edwards, monster from Notre Dame, had a huge day. Big day for the entire Sanders family. How about the performance over 500? Geez, I wonder if he can play at, at FBS. I come in from Jackson's 510. Yeah, can't wait to see him next week against Nebraska. Daniels on third down. They pick up the late pressure. Neighbors on the long throw makes the catch, comes back to the ball, and he'll step out at the 37. How about that? Right hash, the college game. That is a long throw from the right hash. Throws his ball on a line, absolute rope, away from the defender near the boundary on his left side. Gives you an idea of the arm strength of Jaden Daniels. Knowles bring pressure again. Daniels cannot escape this time. Reaching up and grabbing him was Dennis Briggs, the big fella wouldn't let the quarterback go. They're, they're bringing pressure here. They're locking up, playing man to man. And when they do that, you got to get home to Daniels. If he gets out of there, he's going to have a lot of room to run. What an effort there to just hold on by Briggs. I appreciate the strength, folks, of, of what it took to do that. You're on the ground. I mean, Daniels is a powerful runner. He just wouldn't let him go. Four-yard loss. Hand it off inside. Flying downhill was Tatum Bethune to slam into Williams that time. Third and long. If you could tell at home, but this, this, this is a hard-hitting game. I mean, there are guys flying around out here, and there's some big hits like this. Boom, right there. Good job there by Bethune. Filling that up. He's feeling it right now. Again, third down has been a problem. Two for seven. It's a tall order here. Final minute of the third quarter. And here comes a flag. Getting a little over eager was Patrick Payton on the left side. Offside, number 11, defense. Five yard penalty, third down. It makes this third down a little less challenging now. They'll need six. I mean, Mike Norvell, he's going to go back to Tallahassee, and it, whether they win or lose this game. And of course, from week one to week two is where you clean up, you know, they make the most growth. He's going to have a lot of examples of guys just playing with. Been a little bit more mental toughness, being a little bit more sh sharp. They've had a few penalties, not just seven, but some big ones. They pick up the pressure. Daniels gets it out. Mason Taylor makes the catch. That penalty was big. I saw, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Is, yeah, I mean, it, it's the penalties that they've had that have cost them. You go from third to throwing out to a big tight end like Taylor who's got a he's a tough matchup because of his athletic ability and he's 6'6 255 Jason Taylor's son made the big play last year against Alabama a year older he is dangerous second sticking away will they get the playoff they just do 
Last play of the quarter. Daniel takes a downfield shot. Oh, and wide open was Brian Thomas. Had to wait for the football. Could not make the catch. He just got lost in coverage. You know, the, 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 again, when you play man-to-man, -man, you know, whether it's a matchup zone or man-to-man, -man, there's just nobody out there. Thomas leaves him alone. Watch 20. Just kind of has his eyes on a quarterback. He falls to the inside with Lacey leaving nobody there to the outside and the Knowles very fortunate that's not a huge play for LSU. If Brian Kelly asked his receiver what happened end of three in Orlando back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Well coach it's fourth and two what went into your mind to make that tough decision that paid off in a touchdown? You know we felt good about our call uh, you know obviously we were on the field you know confidence in those guys being able to execute and you know, made a great play in that situation. You just called your entire team together to start this fourth quarter. What message you delivered? You know, play, you got 15 minutes, man. Go put everything we have on the line. Uh, you know, we got we to gotta make sure we're playing smart. I mean, guys are playing Hope hard, so playing with passion. Runs we just got to make sure we're playing smart and not having any uh, foolish penalties. And let's go finish this thing. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Well, he'll be thrilled. He looks up and sees Renardo Green makes the pick of Daniels and scoots down the sideline, sets up the Knowles at the 25. Yeah, Neighbors just falls down here and a good job of stepping up in front of that. Told you that battle would be going on all night long. Green wins this one. Neighbors slips, loses his footing. Ball just a little bit late out into the flat. I don't know if it's going to be a completion either way, but Green sees it all the way and comes up with that big turnover. I don't know how he avoided his knee touching the ground there, but somehow he did, I guess. First interception Daniels has thrown tonight. We're gonna I check, he, uh, we're gonna check and see if his knee was down where he made the catch. Just watching in real time. I, I, if it didn't touch, it came close. I was gonna brag on him for being able to not <laughs> touch somehow. Well, don't, don't, don't not brag on him yeah, yet. Yeah, I, I was like, replay's gonna look yeah, at him. So. Yeah, he's down. We've got a knee down. They're gonna bring the ball back to that spot. See neighbors down on the ground looking back, and there's Bill, the knee down. Bill, you do want to err on the side of the official letting the play go, right? In case it didn't touch down, you want to give him a chance to make the big return. Yeah. But clearly, that's what replay's for. We say if you know the call, you make the call. But if you have doubt and you're not sure, leave it alone. And always bring it back. Assuming replay does their job, which yeah. they're doing. Can't they're bring the throw back, though, for Daniels. And FSU's going to have possession here. And their offense has been on a roll. Remember, Travis was struggling in the second quarter. He got his rhythm back just before halftime, and this half, five for five throwing the ball for 98 yards. This ball is going to be moved back. After review, the defender's knee was down with the ball at the 43-yard line, forced down Florida State. So it cost them about, you know, about 40 yards, but they're still set up in good field position. Ball and lead now. And Florida State has a lot of momentum, not only because of the pick, but the last time Jordan Travis was out here. Remember, I'll, look how close they are to their own end zone. Hit a huge throw downfield, put it right on the money to get that drive going to Keon Coleman. And then just putting it out to the outside. What an effort there on fourth down. And then they pulled it to put it into the end zone. What a heck of a read and feel there by Travis. That was their last possession. We're in the fourth quarter now, up seven. These drives get more and more important. Drive recap brought to you by Camping World. And now the handoff to Benson, who busts loose. They're beginning to get a little traction with the running game. That was their best run tonight. And again, he's not blocking anybody on this play. Uh, Jaheim Bell, but it's that two-back look again that seems to be giving LSU some fits. You know, they're, they're having a hard time getting penetration with that two-back look in the backfield. A wrinkle since halftime. They go with it again on this snap. Benson again. Runs through tackles. That's what he does. The first guy there yeah. rarely gets him down. You, to average more than four per carry after contact is big. Absolutely. Did you see that time they, they brought the blitz there with Greg Brooks? but a good job of picking it up and got to give Florida State's offensive line a lot of credit. It's been a battle up there against, against Makai Wingo and that defensive front, but they have hung in there. See who wins this fourth quarter in the trenches. It's a different look, but still a two-back set from the pistol. 
With that blocker on the right side, Benson this time has to escape and will fight back and lose only about three. Andre Sam from his safety position wouldn't have it at that time. And they're, and they're starting to get their eyes into that backfield and starting to, you know, they didn't even have to really fear or respect that running game at all. And so their, their approach with, with how Matt House, the defensive coordinator, is trying to defend Jordan, Jordan Travis is pretty obvious. They're trying to negate that run game, get them the obvious passing situations, and then see if you can dial it up to get pressure. Knowles have been far more efficient than LSU tonight on third down, seven for 12. They need eight. Travis taken off, has blockers, and Jordan Travis skips out of bounds inside the 30. It's FSU's turn to use a design quarterback run. Yeah, and, and you, you've got th th that three receiver, if you include the tight end, four receivers that adjust the entire LSU defense to the left. Then they bring that quarterback counter back to the right. They just outnumbered them. Man, he's been really precise well throwing the ball there. on third down. Now he picks up 13. When, you, when the quarterback can do yep. two different things yeah, to they, move the sticks. Tell you what, Mike Norvell calling a heck of a game here. And they flip it to Coleman, who's running the crossing route. He makes a nice little cut and picks up a chunk before Savion Jones brings him down. Is this Coleman, a great game and designing some nice plays, huh? Yes, and he's saving some of the, the, the better ones for these third and fourth downs. I'll tell you, as LSU's defense gets closer to their own goal line, you look at a 12-minute mark, seven-point game, the way Jordan Travis and his Florida State offense has got some momentum and they figured out some things that are working. It's a big drive for the Tigers defense. They look tired. Travis on the move again, scanning downfield and fires across the middle. And that's Johnny Wilson making another first down catch. First and goal, Knowles. I, I can't figure Johnny Wilson out. He drops a couple <laughs> easy ones. And this we have an injury to Andre Sam, but drops a couple easy ones and he makes the tough catches. It's a good job looking back rolling out eyes downfield and then having a chance because of the accuracy of the ball to get down to protect himself to be able to get that ball into his arms and lower his shoulder before sam hits him there's 14 on 14 right there it's a big man that sam had to hit you know that will give lsu a chance to catch his breath on defense first and goal when you come back college football not done after this one kirk acc collision Capital One Labor Day kickoff on ESPN, 8 o'clock Eastern. Clemson, start number nine against Duke, Wallace Wade. They figure to have a lot of Tigers fans there. Yeah, we'll but get a chance to see Garrett Riley, the new play caller, coming over from TCU. Kate Klubnick, Riley Leonard, who's a heck of a dual threat quarterback in his own right from Duke. Incidentally, D DJ Uyunglele today played against San Jose State out with Oregon State, eight, ranked 18th, 20-25 for 239 and three touchdowns. A big day, I'm telling you. Pac-12 is loaded at Oregon State to that conference this year, too. They're dangerous. See what Klubnik can do against Duke. Now, here's a big sequence. Seminoles trying to extend this to a two-touchdown lead. They have a first and goal at the nine. Toa Feely, nowhere to run outside, cuts it back inside. Looks like Andre Sam is okay. Trainers looking at him, but that did give LSU, and you said their defense was really getting worn down, a chance to get a breather. Nice to see him with the helmet back yeah, on. The helmet is on. Good to see that he's okay. Transfer coming. You know, he spent five years at McNeese State. Marshall last year, seventh year of college football, and uh, what, what a player that they think could be very valuable to them back in the back end of that defense. See what Norvell is thinking about here from the seven yard line on second down. He's got a lot of options, that's for sure. Travis from the pocket, long looping throw! And that man again, Keon Coleman has a hat trick in his first game with Florida State. The ex-Spartan showing why he was so coveted out of the portal. Serious weapon in the red zone. And, and a really good ball here by, by Travis. Recognizing the matchup, Coleman 6'4", can go up in the air being a basketball player. Really good instincts. Chestnut, who's had his hands full over there, the Syracuse transfer 5'11", puts it up in the air and just lets Coleman adjust back to the ball and an easy pitch and catch there for the touchdown for the Knowles. We said both teams had 
added to already strong rosters beautifully in the portal. Some people think that Norvell and Florida State played the portal game better than anybody. Maybe except for Coach Prime. <laughs> yeah. <Florida State> grad. <laughs> right. I'm not going to say it. Well. So Jordan Travis, three touchdown passes, all of them to his new buddy, Keon Coleman. And Mike Norvell says that's what we expect from number 13. It's a two touchdown lead. The Camping World Kickoff is brought to you by Camping World. Over 1 million RVs sold. And in part by Visit Orlando, where anything is possible if you can imagine it. All Seminoles here since halftime. 17 zip edge. Outgaining LSU 189 to 56 since the break. And Jordan Travis is on fire. 11 straight completions. How about 76% how about of your passes for 298? Three touchdowns and a pick. Remember that one back-to-back -back series? We wondered, yeah. hey, boy, a couple of throws are uncharacteristic, and he's certainly bounced back from that. Yeah, very nearly threw a pick from his own one-yard line. Yeah. Lucky to get away with it. Clayton will let it go. So some urgency now for Daniels down by 14. Can't wait for this one. I'm told what? 40,000 extra folks. Greg Sankey, SEC commissioner, talking to him on the field. Yeah. Pre-game, it's going to be quite a scene for game day down there. College and then, of game course, day. inside the ballpark. College game day uh, will be at Denny Chimes, getting you ready for not just that matchup, but talking about all the big games. It'll be a lot of fun to get that. And then, of course, you and I and Holly have a chance in our crew to be in there to call that game. Sounds like Doak Campbell Stadium at the moment. Drag down is Bradford. Gilbert Edmond, one of those reserves, rotating in off the end. Just a, a miscue there up front. And you, just, you see it up front, this offensive line. Emory Jones just, just unable to sustain that block. I don't know if he was expecting Mason Taylor, the tight end, to maybe help on a combo block, but nobody there to be able to help out made it very easy for Edmund eyes in the backfield to come up with a tackle for a loss bad time for miscommunication from the guys up front second and 15 Daniels flushed and he'll be dragged down at the 11 going backwards Joshua Farmer made the play but going D crazy here now <laughs> DJ Lundy again tell you this linebacker has been all over the field number 10 in the middle Watch him move and flush Jaden Daniels. This whole game is about trying to keep Daniels in the pocket. And that time they're able to flush him with both the, to the left and then to the right. Florida State defense and crowd can smell blood here. Third and 22, a whole new bunch of Seminoles came on. It was like a hockey line change for this pass rush down. Long throw, catch by Thomas. He's got a long way to go, get nowhere near the marker, and out comes the punt team. FSU up front, taking advantage of the miscue you said in first down, and momentum just built after that. Yeah. A, a big focus for this defense is being better on first and second down. They picked a great time to do that. And that first down play, the five-yard loss, set them up perfectly to get off the field. Full voice, this Florida State crowd. Came in as underdogs in this game. Neither fan base was terribly confident their side was going to take care of business. Is that kind of even matchup going in? And the Knowles faithful, loud and vocal. That punt was dangerous. Came close to bouncing into a Florida State player. Rolls dead at the 43. Eight minutes to go. Travis back to work. 36-yard punt. Once again, all season long, student sections around the country competing for the Taco Bell Live Moss Student Section of the Year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. So the Seminoles up by two scores, dominating after halftime. Would love to chew on some clock. The Knowles fans can remember what happened a year ago.
It was 24-10 in the fourth quarter, and that ended up being just that one-point game with a block extra point. Again, the two-back set that's been so effective getting the ground game going here in the second half and picking his way through his Benson and just powering for a 12-yard gain into LSU territory. We, we talked at halftime. When we came out, we said, what could get Jordan Travis going? And we said, like any yep. quarterback, we said a running game. And it's exactly what Mike Norvell and his offensive staff have committed to. Travis has made the explosive plays. He and the receivers getting a lot of recognition. Keon Coleman's had a big night. But if you're a Knowles fan, you got to be really excited with this veteran offensive line, the adjustments to this two-back look, and how it's opened up their running game. Talked about Jaheim Bell, so talented. He can do a lot with the football, as he did at South Carolina. He's been helping as a blocker tonight. Only one catch, but he's made an impact in the game in this two-back look. And now, it was going to be a receiver, though he wasn't looking for the football. <laughs> Travis just throwed it into the ground. Holly? Well, guys, Jordan Travis and Keon Coleman have really just developed some special chemistry here tonight, but it's been a long time coming. They have worked hard at it. Jordan Travis stays after practice almost every single session to get extra throws in with Keon. After routes in practice, he'll run all the way down to the end of the field and walk back with Keon, and they'll talk about the nuances, what they want to fix, what they want to change, and he will encourage him. This seems like it's just coming easy tonight, but I promise you this has been months and months in the making of Jordan Travis and Keon Coleman putting in the work to have the chemistry. That's a good point, Holly. Here's Travis on the move, and he flips it wide open. Bell makes an impact play as a receiver, and Florida State may have just stuck the dagger in LSU. We said he'd been a blocker, he'd been a decoy, but he's so capable of that kind of play, 44 yards. Well, because of that, watch, watch what they end up doing with him here. You'll see as the play rolls on, watch him, he, he's actually showing like he's blocking, and then he ends up releasing. That's what affected the safeties. They just ignored him because he did a good job as kind of showing that stem block. They ignore him, he releases, and just right on cue, Chris, he comes up with a huge play. Bell comes from Valdosta, Georgia, South Georgia, not very far from the Florida State campus. He is well aware of the Knowles. Get a productive player at South Carolina. They had a good season last year. You wonder why transfer? Well, he wants to be a part of this offense. And Jordan Travis. And Jordan, and he's feeling it, uh, saying bye-bye to the LSU fans. Not over yet, but seven minutes to go. Three touchdown lead. Here's a symbol for you, Florida State second half. 50 miles away in Cape Canaveral, SpaceX launching a rocket moments ago. And Florida State has just taken off after halftime. Like that rocket. I think that might be Jordan Travis Heisman <laughs> campaign. Oh, I like it. <laughs> 24 unanswered for the Seminoles. Touchdown, field goal, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown on their last five drives. Clayton from inside the five, hard hit delivered at the 14-yard line. What a statement this team has made. You know that the reminder was leave no doubt. Remember what happened last year, and they have been dominant really on both sides since halftime. Incredible what Mike Norvell has done in the four years. You, know, you go back and look at his team with Jim near the end of the Jimbo Fisher era in 2017. They're seven and six, 18 with Willie Taggart. They're five and seven, then they're six and seven. The COVID year, they're three and six five and seven last year ten and three these Knowles fans have been desperate to get a team that they can get excited about you saw the beginning of it last year and a continuation now this year Daniels just trying to desperately create a big play to make a dent in this lead neighbors makes the catch and he's ushered out at the 37 yeah they doubled their win total last year came up short against Clemson and actually lost three games in a row mid-season before reeling off six straight wins and now coming into the season and it'll get even louder after this game expected to challenge and maybe unseat the Tigers they'll meet in Death Valley in just a few weeks can't wait for that one but just think about what what Mike Norvell faced he took over a program that, that had really struggled in three straight years right and not only that it's COVID yeah. I mean, all the restrictions that he had to deal with and he took a lot of negative energy around the program some people even his own fans question if he was the right guy 
he just kept making changes to the point that they're all, they are where they are now. Daniels escapes and scoops for a first down. He'll get out of bounds. Again, the clock will not stop with the new rules in college football. It's not the final two minutes. You know, look at it, 20 and 21, the big year last year. What you don't see with the 2022, after those tough years, they lose three straight in the middle of the year. It's like, oh boy, here they go again. And instead, they finish with six straight wins, including that bowl win. And now you're talking about a team coming off a 10-win season, playing LSU, and they're up 38-17. A lot of optimism right now. Incomplete off the hands of Lacey, and his offense continues to hum. Again, they go over the 35-point mark. They've been doing that routinely. This makes it seven games in a row, Kirk. That's they're all wins, of course, and that's the longest active streak. It's, you're going to beat this team. You're going to have to outscore them. And it's hard with this defense. They have shown a lot of depth no doubt. in the second I think half. That's the biggest difference is, is the depth that they have. And I think they're really physical at the point of attack. Daniels is going to be dragged down after a short game. Verse again was there just crushing the pocket. Yeah, that's what's great about him is he doesn't always have to do it with speed. You know, he's got that move. He's got quickness to go around the edge and the bend. But that time he just used short power that time to push Will Campbell right into the quarterback. Ball comes out quickly in the long throw and a catch to Brian Thomas who's shoved out of bounds. But again, the clock will continue to run here. We'll get down near five minutes when they snap this third and nine. Fourth down and four. Daniels flips it across the middle. Catch made. No first down. Lacey stopped by Tatum Bethune. And the Knowles get yet another turnover on downs. And that should do it. What instincts there by Tatum Bethune. He and DJ Lundy have played incredibly well in the middle of this defense. He lets that receiver go by him. Heads on a swivel. He sees that crosser underneath. And then that closing speed, Florida State fired up to know it more likely just secured victory in the LSU offense off the field. The defense has done a good job, and a credit Adam Ford, the defensive coordinator for Florida State. Good job on third down, and then the fourth down stops have been enormous here. That one just about turning out the lights on the Tigers. They like their linebackers, Kalen Deloach, DJ Lundy made an early play, Bethune. Jerrion Jones, Greedy Vance yeah. come, can come down from the nickel and contribute too. Hill on a delay, and they have they have finally worn down that LSU front. Steadily done so here in the second half. Goodyear providing aerial coverage above Camping World Stadium. Celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. Southern Miss up next for the Seminoles. That's their only September home game at BC, followed by at the Clemson Tigers. The nemesis, they've beaten them seven times in a row. It's on Harold Perkins, who's had a quiet night, I think. He's capable of wrecking an opponent's offense. Didn't do so tonight. And I think for LSU, I mean, it's the first game of the year. You, you take a risk when you play these kind of games. I, you know, I think what's important is you have 11 games. You're going to learn from this loss. You're going to continue to improve. They have Grambling State coming up. They have Mississippi State. They have Arkansas. Those are their next three games. They got to go back to the film room. They thought they they come into this game. They'd be able to win this game. Now you lose it. You readjust, recalibrate learn from it, get a good football team, can still have a very, very special year. That'll be the message. But with a three-point halftime lead, just got completely out of hand. FSU more physical, just banging around, bullying LSU here in the second half. How about Rodney Hill? 
<laughs> and Rodney Hill comes in and says, guys, uh, you know, uh, can I get in on the act? I know this, we're up 38-17. He's been sitting over there on the sideline, and he's like, I'm not just coming out here to kill the clock. I'm going to lower my shoulder, knock some people around. What a run. It's ran over Major Hey, Chuck Burns said, where did that come from? Wow. He's been banged up in camp, but they believe he Not has anymore. a big future. Oh my gosh, 29. Beautiful. This is not just a victory. This is a statement by Florida State. It's a statement by the ACC. We'll end around now. Let's have a little fun as Duspont knocked out of bounds. The game in Charlotte there, you watched North Carolina. They looked each South Carolina and what looked like a pretty even matchup. And now Florida State is underdogs laying it on another team from the SEC. There's the Verbo rankings coming into the season. Nothing really happened to shake it up. No, no. But I think if there's a theme over the first weekend, I think what Colorado did every caught everybody's attention, obviously, and it, and it should. And then I think what the ACC has done is as a conference in those those more high profile games. North Carolina looked incredibly athletic and physical. We know about Drake May, but I think Mac Brown has a heck of a team in Chapel Hill. Where do you rank the Buffaloes in your, in your you rank them top five or you stick top ten after the opening game? <laughs> hey, you gotta give, hey, me, bro, you gotta give you, me a little fun. You, you've had hey. 20 years of misery. Not 20 years of misery. Dude, but they've had some decent 2002 teams. was your last team that was right. really the good. COVID year was there. Yeah, okay, oh, if you want to really good. Come on, we're not getting that. <laughs> I'm going back to 02. What was that back stand? Uh, Kevin, uh, it was good, good back you guys had. Chris Brown, you mean? Yeah. Chris yeah. Brown? Chris okay, Brown. Yeah, okay. That's 02. That's yeah. 20. They ran over Nebraska. Yeah. yeah. And then Miami. I, I don't acknowledge 20 years of misery. I, the last couple have been bad. My gosh, Chris, it's been terrible. That's what makes you appreciate what, what Coach Prime's done that much more. 20 years, we haven't said Colorado on TV. And in a good way. No. Travis weaving down. He's still running hard. Lowers the shoulder. They want another one. Down inside the five. It's first and go. Yeah, they're still hungry to tackle on another touchdown. They're not even looking at the scoreboard. They're just out there executing. I love this says a lot about a quarterback. The way he plays the game, doesn't it? I don't care what the score is. This guy's competing. I mean, he's lowering his shoulder. That's Patrick Mahomes style, right? Whatever it takes, whether you got to be an athlete, use your speed and quickness, or you got to once in a while lower your shoulder and run right into the teeth of that defense to get that extra yard or two for the first. This kid is really special. He's resilient. He's been a survivor. He got booed at home games early in his career. He volunteered to change positions. And they're around, banging into the end zone. And they tack on more. That's Jaheim Bell who scores as a runner after the touchdown catch earlier. Hello. How about how he went into the end zone right over Zai Alexander, the corner, who just happened to accidentally get in the way. Just got trucked by the big tight end. This will be with the PAT 31 unanswered after halftime. As I said, not just a W, a resounding statement. Florida State saying, we're back. We're the team to beat in the ACC. Easy, they got to prove it on the field. We're a playoff contender. That's only strengthened after this game. And go back to the adjustments at halftime when they were trailing in this game. 17-14 at half, they came out, made some adjustments with that two-back look in the backfield, and it's been a different game from that point on. 100 yards rushing in the second half alone. There's 24, Alexander kind of getting in the way. And Bell sending that message. It's been that kind of night, that kind of second half for the Seminoles. You're not supposed to go in against an LSU team and maul them physically. You're not supposed to face this team from Baton Rouge and just run over them. You don't see that happen. They've no. done that in the second half. Good look there from the progressive pylon cam. There's, there's going to be an energy and a buzz around this program. By the way, we've missed you. It's great to see Florida State and that the fans, the energy around this program, and after winning and beating number five, it's going to be something we haven't seen in a long time. It's going to be up to Jordan Travis and the other leaders on his team to just stay grounded and continue to just play humble, physical brand of football that they're played tonight.
And they'll say, remember what happened last year. They beat LSU, a very different kind of a game. Started out 4-0, lost three in a row, beginning with a loss to Clemson. Finished with six straight. That one get away, then they rolled six straight. So it is just one game, but it's one really impressive game. It sure is. Yardage edge after halftime. 285, 92, 285 yards offense against LSU and a half. I gotta film this because I haven't seen this in a long time. <laughs> yeah. I'll shut up so you can get the audio because that's part of it. They are full voice here. There's a long throw and the catch is made by Brian Thomas who escapes and LSU is going to break the scoring streak of 31-0 with their first points after halftime, a 75-yard play. Well, you, you put some backup defensive backs in the football game. Jones there, just that he's a true freshman, just gets out of position. Your LSU, you like to see that they at least keep fighting. They, you know, they, Thomas is a guy that you thought coming into tonight, he and Jane Daniels would get some one-on-one -on -one opportunities and a chance to make some big plays. And, Unfortunately for the Tigers, it comes very, very late in this game. First touchdown pass tonight for Daniels. And one interception, sacked four times, harassed a lot. That just came about to, in terms of clock time, about 20 minutes too late. Quarterback duel, these guys, as Holly alluded, the work ethic. There's so much to admire about the way they go about their business, not just what they could do on the field. We've seen their talents, we do about that, but when you hear the coaches and their teammates talk about what kind of teammates and leaders they are, and despite all the experience, still going to work every single day to get better. I, I really appreciate both these quarterbacks. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and a lot of times when you get all the attention, you know, it, it, it challenges that aspect of your game, and it's good to see both these guys have the maturity. Jay Dam's going to have to be that guy. They said he's really grown in that area. And he's he's going to have to be able to look everybody in that locker room tonight and this week and get him to realize they're still, I mean, it's such a long way to go. He still have such a great year. This is just a disappointing setback. They got two kickers in there for the onside kick. They don't execute it very well as it's fielded very easily there by Zaria Thomas. Well, here's here's Jordan Travis who's thrown for four. Yeah, pr pretty big night. And you know, there were some moments when it looked a little bit rocky early, but he continued to be able to find big receivers. Keon Coleman coming over from Michigan State had a special night. They connected. They've been working on Holly gave you a report about how much time they spent together over the summer. Showed you incredible ability and awareness to be able to pull that zone read on the backside. And then he got back to his arm. Because of the running game got going in the second half, they rode up able to open up some explosive plays. Chris brought that up on our call with Mike Corvell. One of the top teams last year in yard plays at 20 yards or more, number three in the country, and they're off to a pretty good start tonight, the first game of the year. You wait all season, all off season, I should say, for the start of the season. You can understand why fans get euphoric and why this is such a sweet moment for Florida State. It is just one game. As you said, there's a long way to go. They're going to have to handle success and pats on the back. But, but there's a know, lot to like about the additions to an already talented roster, and Jordan Travis is getting a year better in his 60 year football. I, I just think there's something about there, when you go through misery like they did a couple years ago with this coach, and you got some older guys to remind people. Reminds me of some of the teams like Ed Reed, it's Miami. Like when you've been through that, it keeps you focused, even though you're going to get a lot of attention. That's part of having a mature team that can help you. It's a seven-hole SmackDown here in Orlando. They still have never lost in this city. Eleven wins and two ties. Jaden Daniels was effective in the first half. They couldn't get anything going in the second half. The defense could not get a stop at all against Travis. Ends up being a 21-point game with the late LSU touchdown. Mutual respect for these two fine quarterbacks. The 
And let's hear from Jordan Travis now with Holly. Well, Jordan, there's two minutes left in this game. You've got a big lead, and you're putting your shoulder down trying to get into the end zone. Why do you care so much? Um, I love this football team more than anything in the world. Um, I mean, I, they put smiles on my face every single day I walk into the locker room. I'm, I'm so grateful for them. So, so grateful for these fans. So grateful for this coaching staff, this university for giving us everything. So I'll do whatever I have to do to help this team win. I said at the beginning of the year, and I'm going to do that. Coming out of the second half, this offense was different. What changed to allow you to run the ball, get some chemistry with your wideouts? I think we just had to get those, those, those that first game nerves out of the way. I mean, I think that's all it was. Um, kudos to the coaching staff for, I mean, they came in with a great game plan in that second half. And the offensive line stepped up real big, and that's the main thing. It all comes down to the offensive line. They worked so hard, and I'm so grateful for them. So that was a great win, and I'm very thankful. They were fantastic. Your chemistry with Keon Coleman, how has that developed to become what it was tonight? Uh, he makes my job easy. We always say that. He's going to make my job easy. Uh, you see, I just throw the ball from the air, and he goes and makes a play. Uh, that kid works really hard, and he's a great person all the time and a great teammate, and I'm so grateful to have him. For a kid who's heard the boos, heard the cheers now, what does this game one win over a team like LSU mean for you personally, Jordan? Uh, it means a lot. Uh, but we're just getting started. Uh, that's the main thing. We're just getting started, and I can't wait to see where the season goes. We're going to take it game by game. We're going to enjoy it tonight, enjoy it tomorrow, and we're going to get back to work. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Considered a Heisman candidate. It's only going to grow, but he's not interested in that. And what, what you want from a leader is a measured, mature approach, and he has, after all, 23. All right, that's it. I mean, it, I don't care. I, I was more impressed by that interview <laughs> than his performance. That's a big statement. I, I Honestly. I, it, you know how long it's been since Florida State had that kind of guy leading them, not just the playmaking ability, but the maturity. How many times did he say grateful or thankful to Holly? And I think he sincerely means that. He's been through so much. It makes him appreciate these moments, but also stay hungry, stay motivated. With him driving this ship, man, keep an eye on this Knowles team all year long. It's going to be fun. It's a core of veterans that have been through the dark times. You talked about a five-win season a couple of years ago with the additions of some really talented guys. You can't win in the sport these days without playing the portal game beautifully. Norvell has done that. Coleman, Bell, and a bunch of guys on defense contributed. This is a very strong roster, and the buzz is only going to build, so it's up to Travis and other leaders in this team to keep things under control. In the meantime, before the coach, hug everybody in sight because you've earned it. Yeah, I, I love these games. Week one, two top ten teams coming in. Both these teams think that they have a, a chance to compete and win their conference and maybe make a run to the playoff. And for Florida State, they picked up a ton of momentum tonight. For LSU, they go back to the drawing board still with big goals and big dreams for the year. Sweet win for the folks in Garden and Gold. Still on their feet cheering this Florida State team. The final 45-24. Tonight's game was produced by Bill Vanell, directed by Jimmy Platt. We're grateful and thankful for our crew, all of the folks who bring you this game. Two games and four nights is fun. It'll get even more fun next Saturday night in Tuscaloosa, Texas and Alabama on ESPN. Hope you enjoyed it, folks. Enjoy your Labor Day. They are head over heels in the Knoll Nation.